funny. What about the idea? All right. We will call the meeting to order. It is 2.01. 2.01? 2.01? Uh, sorry. 2 -0 -1? Yeah. <laughs> he wants four hours a day. <laughs> 6.01. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Um, I do want to add at the last minute we had a, um, a liquor license that came through uh, today. So um, like to add just move the liquor license right to the front. So right after public comment, we'll do the liquor license for Babe's Bar. It's a request to cater for um, Forward Festival. We'll just add that there. And if any any time we're going too fast for you, just let us know. Give us the old. We'll. Uh, I'll well, try to remember tonight to. Uh, slow down. To, to slow down. And Julie will holler <laughs> or say, "Hey, I didn't hear you." Usually, sometimes the motions and things like that can be um, <laughs> difficult. And then just for anybody that's out there, all two of you. So if anybody has anything at public comment period, whatever, just make sure that you're, you're recognized with your name so that we can make sure it's put in the record. This is Julie's first night taking the minutes. God bless her, so. <laughs> All right, so uh, we have the addition of the liquor license for Babe's Bar. Anything else? Move to approve as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Lindley motioned. All second. The, um, we do have our appointment first. I don't, seeing neither party, we'll just, if everybody's okay with it, we'll just move along until the party shows up and, and go from there. So that opens up to public comment. So if there is anything that isn't currently on the agenda that anybody would like to um, bring up, talk about, now's the time. Ellie had her hand up first. She was quick. No, right. Right. <laughs> Doug was just just a little slow tonight. I know. <laughs> it's because you skipped the last meeting. Right. You know. It's because you skipped the last meeting. She's got one up on you now. Yeah. Oh, you're going, Doug? So go. Hi, I'm Doug this morning. I'm just trying to find out some information regarding the town roads. They haven't been in touch. They really going into bad shape. I'm just trying to find out the reason why. So the grader is down. It was down for about a week, and. Um then they had it back in service. I'm not even sure it was back for a four day because they're on their four tens, whether it was back for the full week or not. And now it's down again. Thermostat and something cooling or radiator. So something in there was a problem. So they called Nortrax. Nortrax has had a big outbreak of COVID. So they're down with some people. Our normal tech was around, but he's doing double. And so one of the parts is, now, now they're waiting for parts and for a tech. So the greater is. This is on the tech, but the, the thermostat is something that can be by the group. Of yeah. They have some sort of mechanical skills. To well, and they, and they do, but there's also some, they have to get the part. So that's something, you know, so we've noticed that with COVID, we've had some slowness on parts. And then there's something else going on with it, which, and so Alan was in about that, and he had called more tracks. I know he ordered a part, and he could definitely do the thermostat, and he said that himself. So he's waiting for something else. And I, I, it's not the radiator, but it's, it's something in the front, something with the cooling. But, so they're waiting, but uh, that, that's not the only time we've had parts on you know, back order. But, um, but that's the problem. We were down, up, I want to say three days, maybe it was four. I don't even think we were up for four days and then uh, down again. On Watershed Park here. Yep. And I didn't know what was up there. The great, it looked like we're not going to be in touch on the watershed. And yep. Seeing the back of it up. Yep. Kept, kept working and the dump truck came back towards two people and headed back to the shop. So I got like something was good around there. Yeah. So that's what I think because we had one. Person was out for two weeks on vacation because they had their they had a baby, so they were out. I have one person out this week and one who hasn't got their CDL yet. They get tested the end of September, 
So I'm basically running the three-person road crew off and on with two people, and one of them is not yet have a CDL. So I'm got it. I'm running at a disadvantage right now. Right. But I appreciate that you're looking, and you're not the only one. So. Well, I'm also on the road there, up on the North Street. North Ro North Main. North Main. Yeah, near um. Just as you go across Mr. Geico's? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just before you do Sandy Road, anyways, that's the, the drop off is getting where the water is going down. It's, it's, it's coming out the road a lot more. Now, there was some cones out there, and now the cones are gone. Okay, so where is that? Because I was just having. Just, just before you get to Sandy Road. Okay, just before. Okay, because I did have. Um, we had a. Better Roads Grant, so WB Rogers was up there was doing a pro is doing a project on Sanders. I'm assuming he's wrapping it up, but um, I'll go up tomorrow and look at that because if he's still there, it's something he could take care of because he was going from East Bethel to Sanders to Gilead. So this is water coming off Sanders onto North Main Street. Is that no, what so it's is? coming down towards um, Christian. Remember Todd? Um, no, he's talking up here. He's talking Sanders. Yeah, right, I'm, I'm, oh, okay. Yeah, Sanders loops around. Oh, okay. He's talking on the north, right. north main end of it. Right. Oh, right, because he's near Geico. Yeah, That's we've had right, some yeah. issues there in the past. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's just before Sanders Road. So, yeah, because yeah. um, yeah. WB's been up there working because we had a project. So he, but he was near like yeah, he's Geico's. Been, they're going to do a good job. Yeah, I noticed that. Whenever. But I'll take a look at this because if this is something that we, you know, he'll be right there. So if he's can't, I'll have a look. But thank you. So yeah. So, have you been to East Bethel? Mm -hmm. Have you been to East Bethel? Yeah. Doesn't it look good? Yeah. It gets paved like the week of the, not the 16th, the following week they're coming in and sweeping and paving. So that looks good too. And then we're going from there to Gilead. Um, so. Thinking about picking up some extra money, Doug, for okay. the holidays? You want to? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, just saying. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. He said cheap. Yeah, I heard we got to end the record. Cheap record. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, so that's what's going on right now. So I haven't seen, I saw Alan briefly this morning, but I don't know um, if what he'd heard from, if he'd got his part in yet or not. So, so it's just he and Hazen this week. So it's somebody else on vacation. Yeah, it's coming in from also from Finley Bridge. Yep. Somebody decided to deposit their garbage and yes. cans and whole Again? Uh -huh. yeah, right. yeah, it's that's an ongoing and issue, they isn't also it? Also started the tires also on their road. Yeah, we cleaned a bunch of them, got cleaned up with the tires. Yeah. Well, mm. trash is an ongoing thing out there. I don't know. Well, it's always been an issue. It always been area. an issue, and yeah. we did. We, there was a bunch of tires that we, that got cleaned up. So I think that's the problem. We clean them up and then they dump more. So. My last pea vine farm. There's a tree down. That tree down. It has, yep, and I had it. There is, it's laying on the ground. I know. You take an hour to clean it up. I have the guy who does that was on vacation. He's back. He's doing some other stuff right now in the water system, and then he's going to double back with Alan. Alan offered to help him clean it up. So we know it's down. It's been down. It'll get cleaned up. I'm done. Well, thank you. <laughs> but I like that. So I'll make, yeah, Piedmont, the tree, I, I didn't know that. So, um, and so does Richard. So it happened when he was away. That's it, Doug. People go on vacation and then well, it stinks. I'm, I'm, and then it hurts because then there's just two. Hold so, on, you say something about C. Who's getting a CDL? Gabe. Gabriel. Is he going to be, is it September? Well, it is September, so yeah, he's on vacation this week, so next week. He's been working with Richard. Because Richard was the most recent one to get his CDL, so he's been doing some mentoring, which has been nice. What about, um, so everybody in the, the younger kids? You know, Hazen? Yeah. There's Gabriel Feeney, Hazen Sauls, and Alan. Oh. That's it. And Hazen came with his CDL. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'll send you the bill. Okay. Okay. I didn't realize anything. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I know. It's hard to keep up, but thank you, Doug. Yeah. All set for now? Take my tour again. <laughs> Check okay, back in another time. And I'll find out about the greeter. 
I think your six o'clock is here. Yep. We're just right now. We just in uh, public comment period. Um, so what I was thinking, if the board's okay with this, is what's here and how long things will take. Is quickly we had um, the liquor license for Babe's Bar, and I see Jesse's here. So if you guys don't mind, as soon as we finish up public comment, we'll just do the, the liquor um, event license because that will probably be just take a second or two, and then then we'll get right to you, Justin. Does that sound good? All right, Ellie. All right, thank you very much. Um, I'm here to talk about the recent letter of intent for a BORBC grant. There was a meeting on Tuesday, August 24th. It was a quickly called meeting to get ideas for the grant. I understand how a rush like that can happen. I'm not sure how I missed that meeting. However, I did. My concern and objection comes from the fact that there seems to be no consideration of the master plan or input from the Recreation Committee. Let me review the history of the master plan. In August of 2011, the select board met with the committee at the Recreation Center. At that meeting, the select board approved and gave permission for the Recreation Committee to design a master plan and work on implementing it. In August of 2012, the committee put up a survey. And I have the results and I have the tallies of what was the priorities, if anybody would like to see. With the results of that survey, the committee chose the BIA of Middlebury to design the plan. At the March 2013 town meeting, the committee presented the voters Three designs drawn up by BIA. And if anybody wants to see the three designs, it's in your town report, this one. After holding a variety of informational meetings for townspeople to obtain information and ask questions, in 2014, the select board chose and approved um, design C. And it's in it's in one of these town reports too that they mm have. -hmm. And this is the town the master plan. This this is the thing that was existing. Are on the committee. 
people interested in an ice skate rink, came forth and helped the committee make it happen. A trail from the center to the school was done because those interested got involved with the committee to get it done. Where are the people who say we need basketball in the center? Why are they not on the committee? Why are they not volunteering to make it happen? In the letter of intent for a grant of five hundred thousand dollars, there are plenty. There are plans for more trails, which is good. There are plans for basketball ice skating, which is good. But there is no mention or plans for tennis courts. The recreation center had tennis courts, and they were used not only by individuals, but were also used to host an Upper Valley Summer League. We had a women's tennis team that played Hartford, Woodstock, Storrs Pond, um, a lot of other places. The courts were taken out in 2015-16 to make room for the new parking lot, with the intention that they would be rebuilt in a different spot. The need for tennis courts and the desire for courts has not changed. The master plan was to give recreation to a variety of needs and for all ages. The pool and the swimming lessons meet the needs of families with small children. The skate court meets the needs of teenagers and older. The ice skating rink meets the needs of young people and older. What about the men and women of all ages that play tennis and pickleball? The tennis court should be the next thing in line to be built before embarking on basketball. The court, the basketball court can come after the tennis courts that um, could be built. And then I just got a copy of the letter of intent, and I see that it says that um, the Bethel's goal is to create a town-wide recreation system as a cornerstone and link. Um, why has that not been um, brought to the attention of the Recreation Committee. And it says in this letter of intent, our goal is to build a permanent multi-use pavilion for ice skating, hockey, and basketball. Why is, who is our, who is our goal? Um, the goal of the committee has been the skateboard park. That's where our emphasis has been. The committee has not decided on the next goal yet. Um, and so, where is the, uh, coordination and working together to make the master plan work. Thank you. And if you want any other facts and things, I have. So I think um, Ellie and, and I, you know, I think we all agree, I mean, you know, the master plan is, is um, the direction for the uh, recreation uh, facility there. And I know that this, <clears throat> this, what happened is this grant money potential uh, was something that was kind of talked about over the last like three or four or five months or whatever, but nobody knew when the money would come, what, what you could use it for and whatnot. Well, why wasn't it brought to the attention of uh, to oh, the So what happened is all of a sudden they said, here's the date. If you want to have a chance at the grant money, right. they rolled it out through the COVID funds and stuff. Here's your chance. And oh, by the way, we had like a week to put it together. Yeah. So, so they formalized a the problem is, is that money, you can't take that money and use it towards building like a new basketball court, correct? You can't use it towards like fixing the pool, like rewriting right. the pool. So it has to something. be for a specific item. So yeah. it's kind of a take it or leave it grant. Right. If, if we want the money, then we have to use it for specific ideas, right. even though it may not follow the detailed um, recreational plan that we have. So the idea was, and it's a shot in the dark, it's a, let's try to get some money for Bethel. So it was a last second ditch effort. There was a meeting that was held, um, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago? Yes. On Tuesday. To put it together. Yeah, the 24th. Right. And, and then we had to formalize some sort of information to give to the grant people to write it so that hopefully we're considered. Um, so it's kind of like, it's not a like somebody decided that we're going to change the master plan at the rec. It was, it was a, there's some opportunities here with grant money. We only have a little bit of time, 
but some of the grant money, if you take it, is not going to go for some of the next steps in the plan, but will enhance the facility over a long period of time. Right. So okay. that that was, you know. I, I think I think LA has a has an important point. If in fact the recreation committee was not notified or invited to the meeting, well, I, uh, they uh, were. Really yeah, everybody was invited to the meeting. Well, yeah. I, but if they weren't notified of the meeting, uh, they were. People okay, know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if they That's if they true. were, then uh, then I get then what we need to say, Kelly, is that they were aware, made aware of the meeting and had an opportunity to come and participate. Yeah, but I don't know, because I had lousy internet, I had problems with internet, I did not know, I, I don't know if, you know, they, they I can see that they probably reached out for me, but I'm, I'm sorry that my internet has been lousy in August, it's finally fixed, so I was unaware and it might not be uh, their fault. They could, they, as far as I know, they reached out, but I was not aware. Well, of it sounds to me that you have a very legitimate concern, and that you were not aware of that meeting, and you would have made every effort to have been there. Right. And and I apologize for that. Uh, but I, but it was. Uh, put together at the last minute because of the way that the, the deadline proposal yeah. was presented to us. And so uh, <clears throat> I just ask you to accept our apologies. Yeah, I just don't know why um, if those other things were put in and not tennis courts. <sighs> Um, I mean, I can't speak. I, w I was not uh, present at the meeting. Well, Paul was. So but. Jean was there. Paul was there. I was there. Farron was there. Uh, Mary, Gri Mary um, Floyd, thank you, and uh, Dietrich Feeney. And it just came together at the last minute. We had thought about just doing trails because, as you know, Thatcher had written two grants that didn't go through. So I had reached out to people and just said, I reached out to the Conservation Commission and said, are you guys writing this again for, tra you know, do you want to do this for trails? What do you want to do? Rebecca Sanborn Stone weighed in and, and sent a out to a bunch of people and said, hey, maybe we should do something bigger. Um, and then Chris Fors reached out and said, you know, maybe we should sit down together because uh, the letter of intent was due Friday and um, I was going to be out Friday, so was Dietrich. And then, so we invited, you know, everybody was invited. Rebecca had invited a lot of people and um, we were just kind of throwing it together. We had Rebecca's list and we had other ideas and honestly, it didn't come up because of the group. We were just spitballing ideas. How much money would we need for trails? What would, you know, we had originally thought just trails, just kiosk, benches, an ADA accessible platform. We were thinking smaller and Rebecca kept saying, no, we had to think bigger and spend more money. And honestly, we were just kind of spitballing design ideas. We had a whiteboard and mm -hmm. then we kind of came up with some ideas and um, thought this is what we could do, hire someone to manage it. And so then we but had I to drop everything and, and write this 300 word LOI. But I think to Ellie's point is. Let's not forget tennis. Yeah. Well, no, and I apologize. And I, and I don't think that the, the, group. the grant application I mean, specifically. Did you? you I know, don't remember. Yeah. I mean, we just, we came up well, with what we came up I don't, I don't think that the grant application specifically, if let's say we were lucky to I don't get know the if money. we can change it now. I don't know. I don't know the I mean, rules. I don't know can, if you, I mean, and maybe we you can. can go to a multi use court versus a basketball court. I mean, I'm sure. Perhaps there's, we could. We yeah. could include pickleball. But the letter of intent is just know. kind of an overall an umbrella. Yeah. An umbrella thing, a place saver, if you will. Sure. To try to, 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 try to get a shot at some of this money yeah. That's, yeah. That's, being, that's coming out. And then instead yeah. of the little money, we went for the big money. Right. Yeah. still have to get specific with it if they say okay yeah, yeah. yeah. so we may yeah. be able to change something i don't know we it it's just what came up it's what the majority agreed on and so we dropped everything and 
and spent you know one sure. full day just writing it and going back and forth and, and trying often, to take pieces of Thatcher's grant and what we knew and some of it's just wording right so yeah. 300 yeah. words is and what I, we got so yeah. you get 500,000 you know, Sure, and, yeah, and I... And 500,000, you know, um, you know, so... Hey, if we can, I think we had the second phase of the skate park in there, if I remember. I don't even oh. remember now. So, yeah, so we'll look. We'll yeah. see what happens. We don't know. It's a it's a shot in the dark for $500,000, no match. And, um, hey, if we get stuff built, then it's more money for tennis courts and what we've missed because it's less fundraising for that to do something else. Right. So, um, but we'll see. I don't know the specifics. It was kind of six million dollars that the state had and then um we thought we were going to do something just smaller and then it right. it bloomed into something bigger but i mean the good thing is it was kind of a spur of the moment thing so yeah. hopefully that'll affect other communities on not getting in in time yeah but you know i guess the good problem for us to have would be okay we get a half a million dollars how do we build this now right right and then we can have that fun conversation exactly saying, oh, i kind of really would like to see this or really see that yeah so, so we'll see what right happens. now it's a, a pipe dream and yeah, we hopefully know those things we'll go. Know maybe we'll starts yeah. out at six million and then all of a sudden it gets whittled down yeah and then they down. say uh, we get ten thousand for you yeah. would you like to have it or not yeah <laughs> so we'll see we'll know hopefully we should know around the 27th to the 30th of September and then sure. we'll know more and, and we could probably you know hopefully reconfigure some stuff or and, and I would pick a ball I don't know and I would assume Ellie if we got you know this is just me speaking out but I would assume if if we're in the running for this thing or get it or something that that this then would go to the rec committee to I don't know. formulate and put together well no we've already know. we know well We'll have to talk about how it's going to work because we already have Rebecca Sanborn Stone's willing to help write it. Um, Jean said she helped do some editing with the editor, and we're going to be looking for volunteers to write the grant because I can imagine it's going to be a big application. So if we make it past the letter of intent, right. we'll we'll have another meeting and and make sure that you know everybody's present and and um, see what we get. So too much money would be a problem to have. Right. <laughs> right. So. Yep, we'll make sure that um, as soon as we know, we'll let you know. Okay. And, and you're always welcome to leave a message on my answer I do get those. Okay, good. I'll make a note. Call Ellie. Okay. Any other public comment, Lisa? Just really quick. Uh, so I mentioned the tree already. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was uh, part of the conservation commission uh, in July. And um, the, the person who's doing the mowing has sprayed weed killer under the fence. And so it's sort of, um, it, it's just, it's like, I'm concerned about kids and dogs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's growing this weird moss algae kind of thing. And so maybe, um, in future seasons, we could forego the week. That's over at the park. At the park. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. And the last little thing is um, I volunteered with the partnership on Sunday to um, Saturday to do some cleanup along the river. Um, I wonder if we could put up with a sign like we have at Peabine that says, you know, if you bring it in, you got to bring it back out again, which includes like dog poop. Which was, and where do you want that sign? Um, at that um, parking area that's right underneath the River Street Bridge. Oh, okay, yep, 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 oh, sure. Gotcha. Yep. Um, yep, pack in, pack out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at least you could say we tried. Um, yeah, sure. It was, it was gross. Yeah, I'm sure that if, um, I'm not sure that, that we did use Roundup. If we did, it's inert, and it would be, it's usually gone within a short period of time. So if we use Roundup under there instead of weed whacking, I don't know, but I can find out. Okay. I'm not sure what the situation was there. Thank you. Yeah, but signage, pack in, pack out, park under bridge. Sure. Yeah. We'll see yeah. if we have one. If we don't, well, we'll get one ordered. No, but, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Anything that's not on the agenda? Okay, here and none. Uh, we will quickly we'll just uh, move to the liquor license, um, for babes, and then and then we will pick up with uh, Justin and Bob.
So we have one event license for uh, Baby Choir for the Ford Festival. And just, just I apologize, we just got it today. So I don't think any of the members have had a chance to, well, it's not really much to see or weigh in on, <laughs> but I would assume maybe, um, you know, we did the same event license uh, two years ago, right? Yeah. And will anything change in the way that you, it's presented over there? I know two years ago you had, you know, the snow fencing up and it was corridored to the, well, if you're looking at the right hand side of the building, correct, at that time? Can, can you maybe just talk to us about, will that change, will it be kind of the same thing or what you're looking at there? Yeah, or? That'd be good. Thank you, Jesse. Yeah, it's, um, we're basically just asking for a one day, we're having a, a party that extends our license into the parking lot, hopefully. Um, so we're, there's a stage set up, which could be four bands from 3 to 3 o'clock to 10 p.m. and 10 p.m. are cut off. Um, so we're hoping to just, and there'll be like food vendors outside. Um, just, we're asking for this permit to get permission to have people come out all the way to that parking lot area. Didn't you call like a block party or dance party last year? Or two years ago, was it kind of like a block party after the Forward Fest? And part of part of this is part of Forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's like an official. I mean, that's helpful for me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't have the the application. Right. Yeah. No, and it didn't say much there. What is? The, what do you want to put on the town's property between you and Brad? It would, it would be just. Uh, we're thinking. We're trying to work out a stage. It would just be like the music stage. Um, so we're trying to work out a flat bed trailer situation. Did you have one there two years ago? No, they built a whole wooden thing. It was on the other side. Sure. Yeah. Therese, part of my understanding, and Jesse can correct me where I'm wrong, was Brad was thinking of putting the trailers in a way so that people can't have access to the town portion of land. Mm -hmm. So that it would actually sort of yeah. pre prevent anything happening on the town's piece of it, so it would keep everything on one side of it. So basically, there wouldn't be anything happening on the town side. Yeah, I mean, that, that was my understanding from Brad's description, was the way he wants to place the trailers, it would, it would sort of keep it off the town side, because we know that alcohol can't be consumed on Right, and if the band, if you were to set up bands on the town side, we would want somebody's proof of insurance, right, in case somebody fell off a flatbed or something like that, right? So if you, um, but if you're going to basically barricade it so nothing is on the town property, then perfect. <laughs> or I guess we can look at exactly where it's going to be, but it might need to be technically still on our property. It just needs to be level enough. So. Yeah, that makes sense. No, so I, I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it. I just am thinking, I'm assuming that the select board would want, if someone was going to do something on the town side, it's not necessarily a problem. They just want somebody's proof of insurance. So that's what I'm assuming, but they'd have to. What do you think? No, I would agree. Yeah. So, but, well, yeah. If, if, if folks were standing there looking at, you know, watching the band. Yeah, yeah then you don't care. They, but then they have to come, come beyond town property. Right. I know. Well, the good news is we have another select board meeting before, so if something comes up in your layout, we could always address that at the next select board meeting too. Yeah. That would give you time to before. But I want we wanted to get your liquor license because yeah, you have to actually you know, wasn't expecting deal. Well, the liquor control, you know, you got to get a few days in hand. We're trying not to hamper you. And um, but if something comes up with the property and the layout, just yeah. you know, just let us know if we need to come back. We're fine. 
So I guess I just need a motion to and then hand signs it. Yeah. A motion to accept the um, I think it's called catering and event license for Babies Bar for October second. So Okay, all in favor? Five. There's nothing I do there. No, Pam has to okay. sign it. It's funny, isn't it? All right. Should get Some guys are good. They're all set. I'll give it to Pam tomorrow. Send it in. All right, Justin. So typically in the past, um, you know, reading through your request, um, we've, we've done similar requests in the past with other identities. So um, I was just writing down a couple of, somewhere I wrote down, a couple of the typical uh, questions that we asked um, with these is, is basically to take us through a little bit on um, the scope of work that you're looking to do, um, when you think it will start, and then what the time time frame of what you think the renovations are. I mean, we're not holding it to the, like the day or the month or whatever, but just so that gives us a little bit of a picture of what you're doing, what you're trying to do. And then, you know, you've had requests here that um, that you were asking for six months, uh, reprieve on the entire building uh, for both the um, sewer and water here next year. Right, yeah. right. We were hoping to get into it this year and start to be doing some renovations and stuff, but we're just so busy, we don't have time. So it's gonna have to be next spring before we can actually do any of the things that we'd like to do. And what we're hoping to do is move our plumbing shop down to the store section and then renovate the apartments and make them new and nice and rent them out as apartments again. Um, so that would start, unfortunately, in no time till springtime. Um, and that's the soonest I think that we could possibly. Yeah, I don't think it's responsible for us to say otherwise. Right. Yeah. Will you um, sell plumbing like supplies? No, no, no. We're just going to do um, like our, our offices and stuff will be down there. Yeah, yeah administration. So just yeah, yeah. Just a business front. With right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. There'll be offices there. We'll probably have a little bit of storage, but our main storage will be job sites and other places. And so that way we don't have to get too many deliveries down there and try to mm -hmm. tie it down. Yeah, I just wasn't sure. We weren't sure. I was like, could be good. Yeah, so that was kind of our master plan is to kind of get the shop down there and um, utilize the old store. Clean up the outside. Yeah. We're just excited that you bought it. So yeah, we are too. We are too. We just have no time now. It's yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And, and I sent you the emails, Bob, right? So you got them about the yeah. downtown designation, the credits, the revolving loan fund. Yeah. And, yeah. Right, perfect. I have it. Talk to Carol about it. No, nope, that's fine. I just wanted to give you everything, every opportunity yeah. that I knew of that yeah, you had. Yeah, we'd like to exploit any opportunity. Great, good. That's yeah. good. I just wanted to make sure you got it. Yeah. You. So basically, in the past, uh, what we've done, Justin, is to, to stay uh, consistent with what we've done in the past with other um, askings to the board is the, at least the two or three that I've been on the board since is. Um, the individual, the owners have come to the board right about the same time that they start the renovations. And then um, in those cases, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody that's been here uh, for a little bit, is um, you know, we've given um, up to two quarters, two, cons you know, two, mm -hmm. two quarters of um, reprieve um, on a water and sewer type basis. Um, but we haven't gone over that. Um, so I guess in your case, what I was kind of thinking of is you, you almost kind of have two options. So the first option is because you're not going to start your renovations until the springtime, is the first option it would be like, you know, the board, you know, granting your proposal of the, the two quarters now, but obviously that two quarters takes you to about when you start your renovations, right? Um, and then you go back on you know, your normal fee schedule during renovations or or waiting until you start your renovations and then, you know, asking for your six months, you know, I guess it kind of helps you guys. do it now because I know for sure I'm not going to use it all winter long, um, you know. And, it, and just so the board knows, currently, it's, currently that property is on the vacant sewer and water schedule. Yeah, with the water off. I don't know. Uh, I would think so. Everything's gone. Everything's gone. Everything's gone. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually had a few questions on that. So when we do get back up, does the town just do a flat rate for water? And that's no. It? 
You actually get charged per EU, so right now... Because I don't see a meter anywhere. There isn't a meter. No. We don't have meters in So that. how do you know how much water it is to build me? Well, what we do is we go by the state schedule. So we use EUs like for wastewater. So for example, yours will change once you open and we know what's going on. Like right now it's, I believe, we're, you're being charged for three EUs because there's three apartments, not even being charged for the store. Mm -hmm. And um, so what normally happens is we look at that wastewater chart and say it's uh, like, 30 gallons per day per employee. So if there's office space downstairs, you get charged, you know, that rate. And then if there's three apartments, you get charged one EU for each apartment. So we just follow the wastewater schedule. Has the town ever thought about going the route of the meter? Oh, yes. We've talked about it a lot. Easy boy. Yeah. Every, every municipality has a plumber. I know. Yeah. Every municipality, every one has meters. I'm sure that's Not true. every, I shouldn't say every. No, but, smaller towns. But yeah, absolutely. No, we've talked because by the time, well, first of all, you know, the water system itself was in, you know, dire straits. So 2.8 million, we're looking at another 1.7 million project next. We figured it would add 500 to 700,000 to put in meters. By the time did meters and corner horns and the whole water pressure reducing valve, and I'm not, you know, whole business, of course. So, and then it's just getting in and getting it done. And um, so honestly, it's, it's a money thing because the pipes themselves were in such a bad shape that it just isn't, it wasn't a big priority right now. The bigger priority was that. So, but we do work with everybody. So once we know what's going on and how many apartments will be, eight or how much you have going on, that's how it gets broken down, is just by looking at the schedule for like wastewater. We do the same yeah. thing. So right, now, so right now it's just three EUs and you're getting the vacant water, vacant sewer, and not even charged any EUs for the store itself. Okay. So and each, yeah, each <laughs> EU is a flat rate. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, of course, depending on how, how the restoration goes, depends on what your EO, EU schedule would be, right? No, because I mean, he's... If they change something... Well, yeah, they went to two apartments yeah. or right, something like that. change the number of apartments. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Reflect the number of apartments. Right, yeah. exactly. And then whatever happens downstairs mm -hmm. is, is, at this point, is like an office. It would be minor for the... the but once, you, once you start the restoration next spring, at some point, probably good to... Yeah, just send me an email and, okay. and we'll go through because the new rates yeah. will start next July. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, so like Chris said, it's either a yeah. now or later. So if I put my own meter in, you guys wouldn't want to. If I just put the cost of my own meter in. <laughs> well, no one's going to read it. We don't yeah. have I'll that. get a remote one. It'll read right back to your I place. We I'll only, I'll be honest, we actually, we have a couple meters, but they're, it's, yeah, um, it's, it's GW, yeah. it's uh, Vermont Castings, um, you know, so it's really bigger business. It's uh, the laundromat. Yeah, places they use a lot. Yeah, yeah, exactly, which we really don't anticipate you doing. I mean, so. No. And, and we looked at the metering, I don't know, pretty four, four, four years the last or so ago. Years. And, yeah. You know, what we ended up finding, because our system is such a closed system, it's not as big like, you know, that other, you know, like Randall, right. it's not as big, yeah. is the cost, the cost that it would incur to put the meters, uh, it would take uh, longer to um, cover that cost in years of service then. So we'd have to go directly basically to say, I'm gonna put a meter on your building, okay. and oh, by the same way, now you're gonna to have to be careful what you use for water and your bill's going. You know, yeah. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know. By you the could, time we pay so it out, it's kind of a tricky thing there, yeah. so. Yeah, and Bethel can't expand the system right now, so it's, it's, it's just tough, yeah. but you're not wrong, we understand. So, I just question. Yeah. Hey, it's a legit question. Yeah. No. So, Therese, when does the uh, when does the quarter? Where are in a quarter right now? Right. So the bill is due for this quarter, September, right? Sixteen. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, yeah, September, and it goes. Yeah. So this bill is, uh, so the bills are a little funky because we bill back in and up forward a month. So this bill you have now ends October and then the next one is November, December, January, then February, March, April. So those would be the two that you would Yeah, so if you paid this one, if you chose the select board would, you know, you could do the other two quarters. So the one I have and we'll pay. And then the clock will start in October? Yep. So that, that's what it would be if we were doing it, it would be yep. mid-October? 
to yeah they to would yeah because we always feel it would be October November December January February March so those would be the three and that would get us into that spring time spring and then start work yep. yeah Okay. Mid October to mid March. Yep. Is what we'd be talking. And then what was the? Um, I know you had put in our packet with the. That that figure you had put in the packet was the total amount for the three BUs for the six months. Yeah, they're currently billed. Yeah, their current BU is vacant sewer is yeah. So they're totally. You received a bill for seven eighteen sixty eight, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, so that's his, there's their current bill. That's for three EUs for vacant sewer, three EUs for vacant water. That's so just her quarter. Her quarter. Right. Well, we're saying the quarter ones. Yeah, how about three of them? Yeah. Oh, so we do have, so we are receiving two. Yeah, we do. So have, we are yeah. getting one for the store and one for the department. Store, store has none. No, you have, look at the address. Isn't one for four, one is for. One is 196 Main and the other is 479. North Main, which is really Avon Drive. Uh, it's a little screwy. Yeah, 479 we're North Main is yeah, not good. Avon. That's North Main. It's a. Uh, yeah, no. It's, I looked at your bills and I saw the 479. I assume you own a second property. Where's. This is house. So yeah, yeah. I knew this one because this, I, this is, when I looked at this, it says it's, it's your Avon Drive property. I mean, this is the, um, this is both, this is the, but it's not, it's the three apartments. This is North Main, which is that away towards Bethel Mills. So not our bill. I was just going to say, whose bill is this? You I don't know, the woman I talked to, uh, it's, a uh, it's a mistake. You just bill it, you paid that one directly to me. This yeah. is, yeah. this is, so this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, So, so does that change the calculation of no, the year? No, no, his yeah. bill is still his bill. Right. This is the we were getting access. Yeah, apparently. I don't know. You're taking bills I have one that could yeah. probably yeah. probably yeah. when yeah. yeah, when somebody um, probably when they were doing the PTR, they just picked it up wrong into utility billing. Because I looked, I just assumed you owned a second property on North Main Street. Because yeah. I looked at your bill, so sorry about that. I'll let talk I'll figure out. There could be um, Eric and, and um, Shelly. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know why, but obviously somebody made a data entry error in the office. So sorry. What, what is the What is the address at hand for the 196? I actually think it's supposed to be 219, but yeah, 196. Yeah, I think 196 is the property that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be 219. I think there was a mistake. But 196, and that's Avon. No, 196 so Main. It's Richardson Store. Main. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure so if you make the motion. Yeah, yeah. Right. So no, he's good. Yep, yeah. and I think I put that. So in. if I if I understand it correctly, that the current quarter that's getting ready to close that you have the bill for now, that you yeah. paid that. Mm -hmm. But but then the quarters between mid October and mid March, those two quarters, then that's that's the reprieve that you're looking for. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yep. What does the board think about, about that? I mean, to be consistent on what we've done in the past, to, to try and get people to buy some of the older buildings and fix them up, we've, yeah. we've made very similar uh, deals. So. so we're talking like 1400 and some odd dollars. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if, if we're thinking of that, then I just need a motion that we would uh, that we grant the two quarters worth of uh, water and sewer uh, reprieve for the address of 196 Main Street. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Ayes have it. So thank you for yeah, well, purchasing it and um, yeah. good luck with your renovations and just invite Teresa and you know. April or whatever when you're doing it and then she can give you a better roadmap on 
you know, if you add this or take that out, what it might change. We also need to look if you need a zoning permit. I'm not yeah. sure for the store, but it'll be a change of use, so we may need a permit for now. And if you want to put a sign up, I, we can walk you through all yeah. that. Sure. We're just happy that you purchased it. Yeah. Us too. Yeah, good. Well, thank you so much. And sorry about the second bill. Send that to its rightful owner. Yeah, we tried. Get you yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Sneaky, sneaky. It wasn't me. I don't know. <laughs> Probably. I'm sure when you, you know, when you're entering PTRs. Yeah. Say. Well, it's pretty easy in that case to get one, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, get it to the owner. We'll give them a break. Yeah. It's fine. All right. Funny, yeah. So next we had, get back on here. So we have the errors and admissions for the Bailey property. So this was provided to me by the and you by the listers office and they give you they gave you some documentation basically the change in value um, they had put it in at thirty nine thousand two hundred it's going to go up to five thousand seven hundred um, obviously they have a good reason here they were unaware of the fact that he bought a different lot and they gave you some good um, information on how the mistake happened and they just want to pick it up and fix it now so that they can fix his bill and. To do that, you have to accept it as an error and omission because it was a list or error. So there's certain ways in which you can do it, and, and because it's a list or error, that's how you can pick it up. As I understand it, the, the value drop is the left thing and yeah. not to the right. developable. Exactly, yes, that's right. Yep. right. Yep. Yes. And she says that, yeah, it's purchased in the river corridor, so. So, unless anybody has any questions in regards to the errors and omissions, so the property that we're talking about, just for the record, is is two one three six Peabine Boulevard, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Two one three six Peabine Boulevard. Okay. So I just need a motion to accept the listers' errors and omissions for the Bailey property located at two one three six Peabine Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll dock their pay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have the uh, the annual meeting of passive um, Raleigh cities and towns. Looks like they're doing a hybrid this year, so it's either in person or mm -hmm. Zoom. They gave so they combine them. In the past town fair has always been passive, and BLCT's um, annual meeting at the same, you know, at the same time. And I gave you all the information, and usually the select board um, approves, you know, a delegate form in here um, to represent us. To represent, yes, and uh, I don't even. No, if I'm going. So it's on the 29th at 1 o'clock this year. Yeah, because what's funny is they're not doing it. They used to do it the same day as town fair. But um, I think town for fair, I thought, was in October. Frankly, yeah, I, I think I have something going on the 29th. Finally, I haven't followed it um, because I didn't yeah, plan October on it. October 4th. Yeah. October 4th. Yeah, because I was going to say. Uh, and usually you do it at the same time. Yeah, we but, <laughs> I don't. Um, Can't make it. <laughs> anyways, yeah, I, I don't plan on attending. Yeah. So, um, but if you want someone to vote, or if one of you would like to attend, we will sign you up. Anybody on the board that would like to attend the, the annual meeting? Represent us, or? Uh, oh, we're going to do it. Okay, Paul. I can go on and. All right. <laughs> You have to prove by my boss, though. Yeah. <laughs> He's not by He's killing you. <laughs> I will. So I don't know how many Paul values. Yeah, exactly. I will make a note, Paul, because there's a click on here where it says, please designate your voting delegate. So, um. Did you put, was there one last year? Didn't you folks go last year? No, not last year. I don't no. think they had one no. last year. No, no there wasn't one last they year. An they did it. I, They might have done it online. Oh, I don't yeah, know. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so it says, please, 
please designate your voting delegate using the town fair registration site. Um, do you want me to do that for you, or do you want to do that yourself? All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So sign up. More Thank, time. Thank you. That's right. I'll make a note. Sign we'll Paul. Sign him up. <laughs> All right, I'll send you an email. All right, then we had the internal controls checklist for municipalities that just needs to be signed. Yep, the chair is supposed to acknowledge the receipt that you've been received by the select board. Um, supposed to be filled out annually by the town treasurer. And I went over it with Pam. <coughs> that happened in Vermont. Who's in charge of what? The state. You find these yeah, the town treasurer, well, because of that, the yeah. auditor, state auditors, which was a great idea. Oh, was that Coventry? And, the one that started and it? I think so, and somebody else, too. And I think it was Coventry. Yeah, but then they, uh, Coventry, and there was an island town, wasn't there or something? In one of the island towns? There, I, there was a couple. Island. I don't know yeah. if it's Grand Island, but there, there was a few, sadly. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so you get one every year, and uh, the state auditor, you know, requires that the town treasurers do that and get the report. Okay. So Kristen is assigned. Yep, he did. Signed yep. away. Charge. <laughs> the same you received it. Okay. Do we just caught you trying to? Not me. Don't double bill people. Yeah, well, it's, it's why you We're hang on. around. So I'm, I'm raising revenue. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Uh, Three hundred and eight dollars a time. Yeah. Hey, however we can get it. Yeah. Get no, that forty thousand. It was funny. I saw him too, and I was looking as well. I just assumed they bought a second property. Huh? Is yeah. It's still investment if you put it back into the. Property? I don't think so. Yeah. I'm not, no, no, no. I don't. I don't. I'm not watching. Criminal somehow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just morally bankrupt. <laughs> still not okay. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Then we had the uh, watershed bridge repair. So. This piece was the the slope restoration of yeah. in and around the bridge, not the bridge itself, but the right. the armament of the uh, wing walls. The uh, yeah, the wing walls, yep. the some of the restoration around that. So this was a yeah, I wrote a structures grant. So this part of the structures grant is the riprap, obviously around the wing wall and doing that work that was laid out in the uh, in the uh, bridge report that the state generates for you, the bridge inspection report, and then part of it to his guardrail, and I already have got um, Lafayette's gonna do that, gave us a number, um, so that's in, and then what we have to do is look at the bridge deck, so I've asked Ryan Slack to take a look at the bridge deck and see what we're gonna do to that. Um, I'm not sure if I can incorporate it, and since WB will be there, and they're already gonna be doing some work on, if we're gonna pave it, they'll be doing some work on Gilead, putting some culverts in and doing some patching so I may be able to do that over the top of it. So I asked Ryan. The transition still over the last. I know. So I asked. Downside one. That's true. Does the wind wall have to be repaired? What happened is that and for the bridge inspection, they give you some pretty clear guidelines. Yeah. So basically, you're just armoring the banks on different ends um, to keep kind of what's there. You can see in spots where the pictures show that the wing wall itself has deteriorated where somebody could go down with some material and kind of travel it in along the base too. And um, I had Jaron Ford, the river engineer for ANR from ANR come and take a peek at it as well. So um, just to get enough you know people in there to make sure we were doing it right. So when, so, when um, you say that the guardrail is going to get replaced, does that include the bridge curbing as well or just the guardrail itself? You know like the the curbing goes along the Sides of the bridge that was pretty well deteriorated. Is right that concrete? Down. Yeah. No, it's just going to be the guardrail okay. that's going over it that that Lafayette will do. So they'll guardrail along the, along the to the entrance and over the bridge now. So and that we got I got an estimate when I wrote the grant and then of course that price has gone up considerably. So I did write to the state and ask if we would be able to get you know more money. Yeah, if, all the steel prices. Because done, right? the prices went through the roof and they said that yes I could write and ask for you know a little bit more money because the price has gone up considerably from Lafayette. So he's I um, said signed him up and 
was waiting for him to get there. So that bridge will be rehabbed in the sense that it'll be armored, new guardrail, and then the deck has to be repaired, which I have a feeling will black top, but um, like I said, I have mine taking a look at that. That'll all get done by the end of this That's my hope, yeah. Here? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't, I have time to get the structures grant done. You have a little bit more time. Probably have to end of what, June next year or something? Probably, or yeah, June or, I think it's June, maybe October, but. I will at least get, I know the guardrail will be done and the, and the wing, the our banks will be armored. If I don't get the deck done, then that will get done in the spring. But okay. we just need to look and see what our options are there. Because right now there's so much dirt on it, we can't put it there. So we had the, um, the bid for that, and do you want to just read off So that? WB Rogers was 14540 RVs was 25465 North Road was 27625 and GNN was 35030 Does Julie have a copy of that? No. Okay. Nobody, no, I can fill it in. Okay. You got it? Okay. That's quite a discrepancy in price. Well, it is. They all bid on the same yardage. What they didn't bid the same on was their um, trucking because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take them. But um, they all bid the same material removal, the same rip wrap, the same amount of hay bales. What they had to tell me was how much labor, including operator, and that's, they, you know, most of them had doubled the time that he had. Um, but uh, also, too, he had a lower price on, um, you know, he had a lower material price. So. Okay. Does anybody have any questions in regards to the bid? Or? So I just would need a motion to accept Debbie B. Rogers' bid in the amount of $14,540 for the Watershed Bridge Project. So, um, rocks, paper, scissors, and okay. Uh, okay. So moved by Paul. Second, moved by Dean. Second by Paul. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, is that it? <laughs> okay. I didn't ask, is, is there a completion date on it? Can it be done by a certain time or? Whatever the grant is, but I think he's going to okay. get to it, so. Like, I, I can't, I don't have the actual bid in front of me, so I can't buy that. And then the next item we had talked about uh, a couple of times throughout the last few yes. months in regards to like, what we talked about last year, I think. Cannabis, yeah, we've talked about it again recently. So with the, um, well, what was it, Act 146? It was Act 164. 164. But then they amended it to S-125, so, or to, uh, to S-25. So I was incorrect in your packet when I told you that you had to vote on it by um, in this year, because that was the original. Um, the original version said that we had to have voted, and if you hadn't voted by March 2023, any municipality that you hadn't voted um, was going to be deemed to permit the operation of both cannabis retailers and integrated licensees. So, but once they, when they did they passed S25 to amend or fix Act 164. They took that part out. So now it just says regulation by local government. Prior to a cannabis retailer or the retail portion of an integrated licensee operating within a municipality, the municipality shall affirmatively permit the operation of such cannabis establishments by majority vote of those present and voting by Australian ballot at an annual or special meeting warned for that purpose. A municipality may place retailers or integrated licensees or both on the ballot for approval. So this gets even more convoluted because I believe that the state, that it, the rule says retail pot shops can open up as soon as October 2022. So, but when Chris called me today and I went and looked at it, this is what I found. So I think that we, we can talk about cannabis tonight, but I don't think you should vote to do anything until I hear from, I'm gonna call, email BLCT tomorrow because it doesn't make any sense. If it made more sense to force the municipalities to vote before it was 
before it was legal. But now, if a pot shop can open by 2022, um, but yet the municipality, they say we have to have voted in the affirmative, my question now is, if you don't vote, does it mean you can't allow, no one can open a pot shop in, and I'm well, that's why I was. So now I'm, I, I don't know what the, it doesn't make any sense because they, the law says you can't zone it out. You can't put fees in to charge people out. You can't regulate it anyway. So what's anyway. interesting to me is they would have been better off to stick to force municipalities to vote it, to say it made more sense. You have to vote by March 2022 so that shops can legally you know, by, so that pot shops can legally go in October. But now they took that part out. Yeah. So now what I'm not sure is if they're saying, basically, as long as you don't vote, you never have to have one. And that doesn't sound correct. And it also would leave you open because someone could petition you. Certainly petition to add it. Someone could petition to add it to town meeting to the warning. So I know Randolph voted it in last year, along with several towns. I want to say 10 to 12, maybe. Um, my thought is you're going to have to vote at some point. <laughs> and we didn't want to do it last year because it wasn't in person. And you figured there'd probably be a large dialogue. But when I was looking for information tonight on VLCT's website, yeah, I couldn't find much. What well, you just said is that it has to be by Australia now. Yep. Uh, no. Well, it says, yes. Yeah, it and says, or. No, it says. By a majority of those present and voting by Australian ballot at an annual or special oh, meeting, read, one for I that read, purpose. I think the way I read it is that, you know, it, it says it by the present, which would be and voting by Australian ballot. So either in person at town meeting day or by Australian no, ballot. I'm reading it that they have to present and voting. I think that I would assume it to mean you could pass a paper ballot. That's the way I interpreted it, that you could pass a paper ballot that day and do it that way. Because if you have to be present and voting, um, you know what I mean? That means it just means you can't vote by mail. Or it means you, you know, it made, to me it made, I interpreted it as you had to actually be at town meeting right. to, to vote. And so then I thought, well, you could just do it by paper ballot because it's still an Australian ballot. Be well, right, because even if we did a special meeting and warned a special meeting just for that, you'd still have to show up. To vote by right. right. So, That's the way I looked at it. But now I'm confused because I don't know why they took the deadline out. Yeah. Well, that's what I had. I was just playing devil's advocate with right. Teresa today. I said, you know, I went online. I was looking to see if maybe there's something that wasn't in the packet. I don't see anything in there that says you have to vote for it. Like, and, and it was in like there. There's no deadline. So basically all the verbiage around it says, you know, that you, you know, and you know you can't accept the permits until this has gone to the voters. Right. But it doesn't say that like you have to do it by a certain date. So even in theory, like if and we haven't had anybody like knocking on the door to do it. So I know, but you also don't want someone suing you over it either. So it just seems like we're gonna have to deal with it. But I need to get some information from yeah. BLCT because it was in there, and this is what we originally all knew was that we had to vote within two years, and that was in 164, and they amended it with 25. Well, can you also ask them on the voting end of it, too? Yeah, I mean, Can we do that in person yeah. during town meeting day, or do we have to have a separate Australian ballot measure? Yeah. I think, I think they meant to say, you know, to cover and or, but. Yeah, because it is odd. Because we would just add that to the normal warning. Yeah. You know, like the article, maybe not 14 or something. Yeah, but and instead we would go from the floor, you know. Instead, of, but there's an interesting thing that you do in Bethel is when, when you guys vote. Well, no, they called it Australian ballot because when you vote, like yeah. Rick will say, when you approve vote for the town clerk, the Rick will say cast we need to ballot. cast one ballot. But, but still, I don't. But it's still, but that's not that's Australian just the Roberts rules and ballot. Things, but so that's an interesting. I, I think the verbiage got put in there because, like you said, a majority of people did it this past year, which at that time. Oh, I mean, I'm assuming that everybody was Australian ballot. There's only like 10 or 12 towns that did it. So I think that voted. Yeah. So everybody, you know, so it, it, to me, it, it doesn't make any sense because when you're reading the rules, it tells you that you 
you can't zone them out, you can't, you know, so there's an odds of like, it made sense to force towns to vote. They basically, if you don't vote, we're going to automatically opt you in. So, we need, so, that's, so I'm going to find out yeah, the more information so for the next meeting. Clarification, both of the, yeah. of the, the mandatedness of the, the yeah. and the methodology of doing it. Yeah, and that's what I'm asking, yeah, because I know this is out because I saw the amended version, what they talked about, and then yeah. what they passed took that out. So I don't know. It's a little bit... Uh, but it's the state, so what are you going to do? But we'll find out. Yeah, we'll we'll add it that. to the next. Yeah. Does anybody have any more questions about voting? Like, if we, I mean, one of my questions is, so is if we never vote it, does that mean we never can open, no one can ever open one? Does it, right. Is it, has the feds changed the laws on the cannabis? So that all no. This, all this is, there's no lawsuit coming down the road. <clears throat> well, I'm sure there's going to be, because what, People, I mean, they I, with their I, cash. I have no real uh, opposition, except for the fact that it's against the fucking law. Mm. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but it irritates me it's that against you're going to law. break the law. The federal yeah, law. Yeah, I, I think there's a bill in the House right now. It's not passed. No, no, no. I, I'm saying I think there's a bill in the House this year. I don't, it doesn't sound like it's got enough weight to carry anything. But I'm surprised they haven't because of taxes and money. That the, that was a problem, from my understanding, from Colorado was people were had so much cash. They were buying land and they were buying buildings and they were jacking the prices up because they had to do something with the cash because they couldn't right. put it in the bank. So it is an interesting. Well, I'm just surprised that the, the feds don't turn around and I'll, I'll use it like years ago with like the seatbelt thing, right? Remember there was states that didn't have a seatbelt law and then the feds took away uh, oh, transportation that's funding for those yeah, states until they complied. And I'm surprised that they don't do something. I mean, I, again, I, I don't think I have an opinion on it either way, but it's just kind of, you know, the formality of the things is kind of, kind of a little weird, but. We're in, we're in a society of litigation, so we yeah. sooner come down the road and say, this law to have cannabis, my kid got high, got killed. I'm going to sue you because you broke the law knowingly. Well, you you'd probably would win the suit, but it would cost you a lot of money to charge sure. litigate. Sure. Yeah, I mean, and I don't think, to my knowledge, you've had anybody in the town that has proposed any That's ideas of opening anything up. No, 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 Remember him who came in, right? He was running on that. Yeah, he was running, yeah. part of the platform. That's right, Paul. That's right. Um, <coughs> okay. So, yeah, this was just talks about, um, you know, prior to a cannabis retailer integrated licensee operating with a municipality, municipalities shall affirmatively vote. Um, but again, this is just saying the same thing. It's not telling us um, when we need to vote it. Um, but it does say you can't prohibit the operation through an ordinance right. or a bylaw. Yeah. And um, you cannot condition the operation of an establishment um, <clears throat> on any basis other than the you know, conditions in subsection B of the law. And you cannot exceed the authority granted you know, to regulate a cannabis establishment. So to me, if you never vote in the affirmative, you're never allowing one in. Eventually, or, or, or you vote yeah, or you, yeah, or so eventually you get petitioned to go on to the town warning, I would assume. Right. Is, is there a window, for, like, just walk down the path of we chose this board not to vote. Mm -hmm. Does that window of time close at some point and we can't vote, or is it just sort of an open, like, five years from now we could I don't know. put it to a yeah. vote? That's a good question. I'll ask because it, the way they've worded it makes it sound like that's how you can get around allowing one in your town is by never holding the vote. Right. So and that seems a little sketchy. Well, when it, when it was a house bill, they had a parameter around yeah. when you had to do it by. Right. But when it when it but changed to the Senate side and it got some yeah. provisions to it, they took it out or left it out or next, whatever. So I'll ask, do we ever have to vote? So we'll find out. I mean, eventually, someone who wants to open one will petition. Sure. You come to you and ask you to put on the warning, and if you don't, they'll petition and get enough signatures to put on. Right. So, um, but we'll, I'll find out some more information because, like I said, I searched BLCT's website and I couldn't find anything tonight. Yeah. Really different, um, sort of 
different line of thinking, but are there, like with the 1% options tax, will there be options if a town says, yes, we want cannabis shops, are there, do we know if there are gonna be tax options like that that can help the municipality that if we said yes, then we could apply it, you know, the, the 1%, because I know like a 1% options tax is, is a little bit different, but something sort of- I think that yeah. you can't, discriminate. I think that if you have your options it's tax, it's everybody. Yeah. But right now, the way that it's set up is we that the apply. state of Vermont will collect fees for cannabis permits, and they're going to send some as of yet unknown money back to us for the town. Just like with a liquor license, you know, we get five bucks, the state gets five <laughs> bucks, or whatever, or the state gets 120, and we get five bucks or something. Yeah. But okay. so, so that's we, what they're talking about. Yeah. yeah, they said you can't. Some slight reciprocity. Yeah, the only way you can do the 1% is if you already have a localized. And tax. you have to do everybody. <laughs> so like, I'll make it up like Williston has a 1%, so yep. they could add this as, they could collect 1% on that. But the municipality has to be, have a certain be a certain size to be able to do that. I don't think that's the type of thing that we would do. Uh, do you have to be a certain size? Certain amount of money changes. It says there. something in here. Uh, yeah. Uh, it has to meet some guidelines from 1997. Yeah. I was going to say there's something in the packet right here. Yeah, tax stabilization. Yeah. I mean, the way I read it, unless you wanted to go forward with a localized tax, right. yeah, you wouldn't be able to tax this um, unless you wanted to. Do it on everything, which you know. Oh, our next conversation. Which normally towns that are anywhere close to New Hampshire don't want to do that because right. you know, we lose our business in New Hampshire point. as it is. So yeah, that's true. Now, if you're way up in Burlington yeah. and all you have to do is compete with New York, which they have localized taxes, then you're all set, right? So. All right, I'll get you some more information. Perfect. So we'll just carry that one on. Pick that back up at the next meeting? Or yeah, we'll try with October. As soon as I get information, okay. I'll try to get it for next meeting. I'll see what I can get. I mean, we have until what? The end of December? Yeah. Or, yeah, we'll have December. It. Yeah, November, November, December, yeah. But it's nice to know that way you can get public feedback. Sure. All right. And next up, we had the discussion of, we were talking about, um, uh, well, you know, we've always done our meetings in person. Um, and then with COVID this past year, we were able to uh, make a short-term adjustment through the select board to amend the procedure of voting, which we, which we chose um, to do the Australian ballot um, for everything, everything this past year due to, to you know, health and COVID. Um, but it automatically defaults back to your your previously voted in methodology of of doing your town meeting date. So so uh, this March we'll be going back to in person unless something comes up between now and then, so, you know, with COVID or something else. Um, so right now we're going to go back to in person and the discussion had come up in regards to, you know, now that we've experienced the Australian ballot, you know, methodology of things, you know, do we want to go back to in person? Do we want to go, you know, to Australian ballot or some sort of hybrid, you know, uh, difference there? Obviously, we have to go before the voters to vote on, so that would uh, <clears throat> we would have to make a decision to put it on the warning or not. And we had talked about a month ago, maybe, of the board. I want to say the board making a decision before the end of October. Does that sound right, Trace? Sounds about right. That way, let's say if the board decided, no, we don't want to go forward and make any changes. We're going to do it just the way we do it now. It does give the residents of the town the opportunity to petition to have it on the warning in time. So, mm -hmm. And I think we, for some reason, the end of October rang a bell for me. That that yeah. was enough time to petition and get it on before yeah. December or something. Enough time. <clears throat> so we, we were going to make a decision. Between the end of October, keep it the same, do it different. What do we want to do? Um, so, so you have some options. So you have, you know, options, um, which is you could elect just your officers via Australian ballot, and then your budget is done, you know, off the floor. So, um, what what changed? So currently, you vote everything off the floor. 
So if you did that take and you said, okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna do Australian ballot for the officers, but your budget remains on the floor, then what it does is anyone interested in running for office needs to come to the town office with a petition, it has to have X amount of signatures on it, which is not that many. I can't remember if you're one or three percent of the population. Also would have to fill out a consent of candidate, which says how your name is, how you want it to appear on the ballot, that sort of thing. So then you would know in advance who was running, and then people would cast an Australian ballot um, for the officers, and then you'd vote, vote your budget at town meeting. That's one option. Um, the other option is you vote everything via Australian ballot, which is what we did last year, which was officers as well as your budget. Um, there's also, um, or you could do, yeah, you could vote your, you could do the opposite. You could vote your uh, officers from the floor, but vote your budget via Australian ballot, or you know you do you do nothing. But um, and and then you know anyone could petition to do that. So I was I was sharing with Therese like over the last couple of weeks. I've just been you know random conversation with people that I bump into regularly in town of you know, what do you think about in person versus. Um, Australian ballot type voting. Um, a majority, a very large majority of the people I talked to would like to keep it the, the way it was. I wouldn't say the same because that would be Australian ballot. But <laughs> um, so it, 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 and I would say those individuals that I talked to were, you know, what I would perceive, you know, long term residents of Bethel, um, you know, longer than myself. Um, and then this past week, I've been talking to some of the same people, not, didn't catch up with everybody, but some of the same and said, listen, what if we went to Australian ballot and we did an A or B, you know, one thing or the other. And, I, and then, it, then it was a mixed bag. <laughs> like, you know, some people said, well, we do the budget. And some people said, well, we do the candidates. So that kind of part went kind of mm -hmm. a little haywire for me on, yes. on asking, because I've always. So could you, could you do, um, the candidates and the budget Australian ballot, but still have the town meeting in person? No, and there, there, there wouldn't be any, any you necessity. Wouldn't, you wouldn't it. have any. Yeah. You, you would have an informational meeting. Right. You'd oh, have a budget oh, meeting right. yeah. probably the night before and oh, to let people yeah. know, which is the way oh, we did it. And we typically do an informational meeting yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I forgot um, about the information. I mean, I, I did take a step forward with some of the members of of the town meeting committee and ask them because they do host that. I guess the, some of the information I got was, um, you know, the, you know, it's kind of our, our our opportunity once a year for the town's folks to get together under one roof. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you mentioned the pie and, and some other yeah. opportunities to people do like to see pie. thy neighbor. Um, yeah. um, but uh, again, it's just a short. I'm not talking to everybody, but. Um, so I, I don't know, it's kind of a... There, there is another kind of action that can be taken by the town meeting. That's a resolution. Um, several towns have become, well, I don't know, nuclear, just for illustration, a nuclear-free town, uh, where the town has, has to vote on whether or not to do that. That's a non-binding resolution. It, but right. that's an action that can be taken at a town meeting. Basically, it gives you the pulse of the people. It doesn't, right. there's no right. action required. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the other, you know, the thing that I think the key thing to remember is, is if you choose to vote Australian ballot on your budget, you, if it goes down, you have no idea why. That's the tricky part about the budget. Does she have an exit poll or something? Like right. Which is... You know, sometimes people aren't always truthful, or they or they write, or they write it's too expensive. You know, it doesn't really guide you to, to how you're going to do it again. Australian ballot, you know, for the officers, and you just you, you know who's running in advance. So, um, you know, the other, and that's the other not a big piece deal. of if you do the budget Australian ballot is then no appropriations can be made from the floor, or changed from the floor, right? Which I would say Bethel has, a, has a strong history of yeah, that's a good intentionally point. making changes, like we did the, the skate park appropriation in one year, and mm -hmm. different Or the misappropriation for one of yeah. the human services right. there. Yeah. 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 So I, I think you lose that ability to actually 
do more good and or fix the issues within it. Of course, it was the one year that the budget got blown down and it got really confusing and they chopped 50 grand out of it that we had to then figure out where that was coming from. Yeah, that's <laughs> tricky. And so there is, I mean, it does give yeah. people the opportunity to do feedback and um, certainly I've seen it that way where you do your, you know, you budget from the floor and um, then people vote Australian ballot for the officers. But, I mean, you know, we also, we had voted, you could also vote public questions that way um, for like zoning, if you're going to pass zoning rules, mm -hmm. that sort of thing too. So I kind of like it, but, you know, I hadn't even thought about it until Jean had said the non-binding resolution, you know, because here we're talking about more of a binding resolution, but, you know, it, you know, if you felt the pulse of the people that are there, if we had a non-binding, what do we think about Australian ballot versus in person? And then at least, you know, let's say if it's overwhelming support for Australian ballot, then then we can put it on the next year warning to take it back the year after. You know, You'd have to be clear in your non-binding. We do something this year. No, that, that, that resolution will come up on the floor, but that year, that meeting, you still have to decide. We're in person. No, he's saying oh, no. no. because if they've got to vote on it first before right. we go. Yeah. yeah. But if they did a non-binding, you did a non-binding resolution right. in March 2022, mm -hmm. then, and you found out the way, then you put it on in March 2023, and then it wouldn't take effect until 2024. Right. Yeah. But my only advice about that is if you're going to do a non-binding resolution, it can't be. <clears throat> Should not be blanket to go Australian ballot. You have to say Australian ballot hey, officers hey. or Australian ballot for this or for both. You have to. We'd have to come up with some wording to be clear. So free that. My, my, that current, is my preference would be Australian ballot for officers and uh, in-person town meeting ballot for voting for all other business. So basically, you'd want to pass up paper ballot for every budget item? Is that what you're saying? No. Of the day? No, no, no. No, no. In you person. Just, I put in person vote. In, in person. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought it was in person ballot. From, okay. from the floor. Thank you. In person yep. for all other business. So that would include the budget. If a, a non yeah. yep. should come forward, right. any of those kinds of things, that would be my preference because, and my, my argument is that the budget and, and any of those now, that provides the opportunity for back and forth dialogue mm -hmm. in ways that are, I think, are really helpful and community building. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And, and it also, on the flip side, uh, my experience <laughs> was that it enabled or encouraged a wider body of the population to uh, learn about and, and then decide about who their representative should be. That's a good, I mean, and, that's a good point. And I, uh, and, but that's my, that's, so that's my preference. And, and uh, if I had my choice, that's where we would go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, I'm sorry, I just didn't understand. No, what that's fine. Right. I just wanted to yes. make sure. I was thinking you could do that, it would just be there for days. I was just, I was like, well, and, and, and I understand that we, in order to change yeah. from an in-person town meeting, yeah. we have to, the town has to vote that yeah. at a town meeting. So we, we. That's funny. Yeah, you're right. It's funny. Right. So we, so we so took a poll in here quickly. Jesse, what, what would you, what's your opinion on it? I'll just go this way. <laughs> You uh, like in town? Yes. Well, everything in town? Do you want anyone, do you want to vote Australian ballot on the officers but be in person for the budget or do you want the whole no, thing in person? The whole, whole thing. thing. What, what do you think, Jesse? I would say, so I guess a clarifying question, if we do the Australian ballot for the, the officers, would that allow folks who cannot attend the town meeting to also vote for those people? Yes. Okay. For the officers, yes. yes. Yep. But not the, not the budget. You'd have to yep. Yeah, that would be my vote. So that way, what do you, what do you think, Ellie? Yeah, I like, I like what Jesse said because um, I do like the in-person and I feel very um, important that we do the in-person. For the budget? For the budget and but you didn't care about the issues, officers. 
the human service stuff and everything, different issues. But, but I do like having the Australian ballot for the officers because then it gives other people that can't get off and they can vote. For, for the representation? Vote. Yeah. What's, I mean, if we just had to go through the board quickly, do we all have kind of a preference? Or? I, like the, I like the concept of having the interplay at a town meeting discussing budget items. I like that, having that. I think we've seen, we, this last time we saw a change in the election of offices uh, going to the Australian ballot format. It seemed like it. It was it's quite, a, in my mind, it's quite a drastic change from what we've done in town meetings in the past. Um, and, and I didn't like some of what happened. Um, so I, I'm not sure about the, the election of officers by uh, Australian ballot, I think. <coughs> you could certainly do a paper ballot if you wanted the anonymity you know, factor and whatnot. Oh, in person. Yeah, in person, paper ballot at the town meeting. And I think it got a little bit out of hand this, this last time around. And, and, it, and it was quite different than, than what I've experienced in many years ago. What about... Uh, I'm concerned that people I talked to were voting on things they had no idea what they were voting on. This this past year? Yeah. When, when you say, Chris told me that I should vote for this, this, and this. So I like Chris. I'm going to vote for those two things. I have no idea what they are. Was that on? Some, so I'm go was that on one or the other? Was it more budget or more officers? It was more budget, but you could do the, you could do the same thing. If you had a real fast talker who wasn't much of a uh, good candidate mm -hmm. could get elected without getting in front of everybody and speaking where they could ask questions and see the man talk. I. I'm for everybody to be everything to happen in person. In person. Okay. Put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so it's just an opinion. <laughs> I, I just spent a lot of time with this with this thought because I think that the accessibility issue is a very real one. I do think that our state makes it feasible to have the meeting be accessible, whether or not somebody will choose to take a vacation day if that's what their employer requires of them, that's on them, not on town necessarily and there's part of me that the the community aspect like Doug was saying like everybody coming together and having those discussions the back and forth that you get at town meeting it's unique it's something that I I'd be really sad to lose as a town but I also think that the accessibility issue is still real so I think I'm, I'm leaning more towards keep it all as is but I also think that if if it really came down to it electing officers by Australian ballot um, would be my compromise. I think the downside of that is sort of to, to Paul's point of this year we had a very robust campaign, right? In past years, we've had zero interest. And so what happens on a year when no one puts their name in? And then we go to, like, that's my concern. I mean, I was some the minimum write-in amount, right? Nominated for more. If nobody, if you get, if nobody run, wins a write-in, then you you have to put it out, right. and yet just the way Dave got on the first time, right? Did you interview and get appointed? Yeah. Right. The yeah. First time? yeah, so it would be the exact Dave same process. Dave came on with Carl. Carl got it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, yeah. Uh, so it would be the same process, but I've seen it happen where people don't vote. But then you're right. Then you someone could run and write in and get 13 people or what is that? I think it was 17 less? last year. Right. Can't remember something, yeah. and then all the other end. So. And I feel like that's an. Which, which actually happened at the school level. There was like somebody that did get on, <coughs> right. just enough. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah. they had one, one for one position on the school board. They didn't have anybody. Yeah. There. It was a right in campaign. Yeah. yeah. I know so there's a state law in Vermont about that. What we need to do today. Mm -hmm. um, I say we, we we put it on the ballot, and then the people that are there will have to vote. Um, if they vote anything other than full on meeting like that, I won't be happy, but I'm willing to let so it So if we were to put it on. But you, you can have to vote for it in person whether you want to change it or not. Right, but you control. The question is going to be. What's the question? What the question could be do you want, you know, the, the question on the warning could be 
Um, do, do you know? Shall the voters of Bethel, who you know, basically vote Australian ballot on officers? So you don't have to. It could be a. So you we're could, sort of deciding what our warning you're, is going to say. You're gonna, you right. decide what your warning is going to say. So we're either we're and you don't doing have to do it. We're doing one or we're doing yeah, you don't have to. Regardless of what we put on the warning this year, we still have to do everything in person. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, I mean, unless yeah. there's a COVID Just, thing or something right. like that. Yeah. And you don't we're, have to. We're sort of making a side. and everything's in person. Can somebody from the floor make an amendment? No. no. They can make a non-binding. Oh. So you, you, you at the end, the morning, so, yeah. at the end when there's any other business, you could make a non-binding question, um, kind of like what Jean was saying, where you could get the feel of the room, oh. um, but it wouldn't be anything binding. If it's going to be binding, it has to be on the morning. So oh. you could put both questions on. You could say, Shall they vote Australian ballot to elect officers, or you could, and you could add whether to vote Australian ballot for budget articles. But you choose what goes on the warning. You could add one of these questions, or you could add both of these questions, or you could take Jean's suggestion and add none of these questions and just a, have just a non-binding resolution. So you're basically not taking any action. You're just gathering information. I mean, so we don't have to decide tonight. I just had it on my account on my calendar that. We've been well, talking about this. traditionally, though, the non-binding resolution stuff comes at the very end of the meeting. That's, yeah, the last question. When attendance is, is doing yeah. mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. But you, you could, I don't know why you couldn't move you that. Could, you could do that first thing. You move it up. You'd have a non-binding. I'll look, but I don't see why yeah. Yeah. there's any law. You can move around. Preventing it. I've only seen it at the end, but I could ask. Well, I think you have to have your moderator first. Right, you'd have to talk to it. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, you'd have well, to somebody else those. wants to. You do your officers them. first, and then you could right. maybe get through a couple questions, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I'll find out. That's sort of the issue of people. Well, you're right. What you just suggested is gives people all three options. Keep it the way it is by voting both of those down, mm -hmm. voting or voting to do the officers. Australian mm -hmm. and keeping the other, mm -hmm. or third, keeping the other, but, but doing the budget by Australian, but the, yeah. the officers in person, or doing the whole thing, Australian. Right. And it gives the town the most... Uh, it gives the voters all your options. All I, mean, I think the only thing I'm concerned about that is just... I think that's too much... Confusion. Being in the past, is it's... For us on the board, we have a pretty good understanding of what those options mean. But often, when you get in a hall of, of a bunch of uh, citizens, that sometimes it's confusion that will happen. Yeah. Not not necessarily that they don't understand, but sometimes they don't you know know what that means versus what that means, uh, or it's voted up or down, and there becomes these confusion questions. And we've had those at town meeting before, mm -hmm. um, just, just the way maybe, like I'll, I'll bring up examples, like sometimes when people will make a, an amendment from the floor, remember those days? And then it would get very confusing because are you voting on the amendment or are you voting on the budget, right? Mm -hmm. Remember those days? And then it was, you know, and in some cases people voted for one or the other not knowing what that actually meant. They thought it was for something else. And yeah. I think well, we would have to be careful of what we, uh, how many uh, options and you can on there. Would, uh, that's also true for Australia. Yeah. And people misunderstanding or not understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, the advantage of having, if you have a full mm -hmm. multiple choice like this, mm -hmm. in, in in person meetings, yeah. you have the opportunity to explain very clearly this is what this means. Yeah, but they'd be separate questions. So it's. It, it, but yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not. The confusion, the educability of the electorate, uh, all of that happens whether we have Australian ballot or in-person voting. Mm -hmm. And so the, that. Well, and I think, I mean, from at least the polls that we took here, no one or the vast minority said, I want budget by Australian ballot. So kind of going back to Dave's point of, 
you know, maybe the maybe the best option is to make one layer of decision, whether it's tonight, whether it's in a future meeting, but make one layer of decision, which is to put the, the one that had more more interest, which is the officers. the officers as Australian ballot, but as an option. Yeah, not. I mean, I I think that. Gene, your point of like the non-binding resolution, yes, it gives them all the options, but I think it also does create a lot of potential clash and then further confusion without, and people end up voting on things they didn't understand they were voting for or against. And so we could almost cut through some of that confusion by making one layer decision. And I get that it's a small, it's a small poll, but I think we also all have been doing that sort of taking the polls from different people around town and maybe we table it for tonight and our homework is, we, we kind of do a more concerted effort to do that as a board, and then we come back to the next meeting and say, okay, here's what I learned. And I think we had yeah. talked about before the goal was, you know, so I think we have two more meetings. Yeah, at the end of October. Um, because then that does give the citizens the opportunity right. that if we don't make anything, that, you know, they can petition and do it. You know, I just wanted to say on my end of things, you know, this, you know, I've been in Bethel for 16 years now, and my only other experience on voting prior to coming to Bethel was a, a complete Australian ballot system. So, um, and I, you know, of course I wasn't quite as into politics now as I am, you know, or back then as I am now, but I just remember like literally going to the poll and being like, uh, don't know any of these people and, <laughs> you know, and I'm not really sure what the budget's about, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, um, but I will say when I, when I came here, uh, it was, it was uh, very um, different to go to my first meeting in person, you know, and you know, and sit through that. You know, there was probably 200 people there, and you're kind of, you know, really just soaking it in. What is it all about? And and uh, you know, it was it was really neat to see democracy happen like in front of you, you know, where you you knew instantly, like, okay, you know, that person won or. Mm -hmm. A bunch of past, or this got amended, and you didn't have to wait like a day or two to find out, you know, what happened. And and it was neat how individuals. I mean, you kind of knew that okay, Dave Eddie's going to run for a seat, and maybe you know Gene was going to run for a seat. And then you know you get up, you make a speech, like you know Doug was saying, you know you get up, you get to hear about the person, even though you probably already know them, right? And um, you know, and then you vote from the floor. It's kind of cool. And and then maybe if you know if there was two seats available and and uh, here, I guess, would be another advantage is let's say you two went together and, and Dave beat out Gene, and Gene would have the opportunity under the second item to run for the, you know, he could run for the other open position. You know what I mean? So there was, yeah, so there was kind of that uniqueness where, where you don't have that, I guess, with the Australian ballot, but I, to watch it work was kind of cool. Um, and then I, I think the more I've been here now, you look at like you know pies, and it's kind of more the bringing of people together for you know once a year. I mean, even though you only have a ten percent, you know, of the people that come mm -hmm. uh, for the day, but you know, but also what Lindley was saying is, you know, in the state of Vermont, it does allow for all people to attend town meeting day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not like some states where you might not have that option if your employee says no. Um, here you can. Um, so, yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. So it's it's kind of you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you think I, I, so. I had a job in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take the day off, but it was a personal day or it was a vacation right. day. Yeah. It wasn't a holiday. Right. And that's a. And I don't think it's a holiday either in Vermont. No, you can take it as a non-paid day. You can take it as unpaid or If you're an hourly <laughs> worker who, you know, needs that, and you don't have a whole lot of six days or, or whatever right. to take, that becomes... Well, nowadays you get PTO time, so you can use it whenever you want. They can't even question You can say PTO. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I've always had to give two weeks notice in order to get it. I always make sure and put it in a month ahead of time to make sure I can get that data. Yeah. So, so, I, mean, I, think the, yeah. I think what I was leaning towards was more of the in-person with the budgets and 
you know, maybe looking at the candidates and voting on that separately, but I, you know. The individuals I all agree to the importance of But the individuals I've talked to over the last couple of weeks, you know, a majority of them have been, you know, like Doug, that have said they really like the in-person meeting. And I didn't really have anybody at the ones I, and I always say these are kind of more long-standing residents of Bethel, but that's why Bethel's unique, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then once I, you know, had said what if we did option A versus B, then I just became, just, yeah. you know, it was a yeah. tangled mess of who knows what we want, you know. I came from a town that did, we voted Australian ballot on the officers and public questions, um, school budget, police budget, but the budget itself was voted off the floor. And um, I was an elected official in that town for many years, and so you knew if someone was running, against you, but one of the things that the, that the um, and I just for record, I ran unopposed for years, but, <laughs> but because people were crazy, but the, uh, what the select board, what was nice is the local paper would always run a little article about, you know, two people running in this town or two people running, so you got a little blurb, you know, they interviewed the candidates and they did do, um, and I, uh, in person, uh, like a question, the candidate night too. So there were opportunities for people to get together, to get to know the candidate um, via newspaper article and via little function. So, um, but you're right, but I mean, Paul's also right. Things can get a little ugly. And um, so, you know, sometimes that happens too, I guess. So we kind of at this point will agree to, do we want to do it at the next meeting or do we want to do it at the fourth? You want to wait till you want to wait till October. The, That's the board. Well, you still have October. another September. We could do it at the beginning of October meeting. So the first meeting the in October, second Monday of October, we'll put that back on and give everybody a chance to you know, pull it over. Gives us some more time to reach out to community members and see what people think. And, okay. And then that that should give ample time if somebody yeah. wants yeah. to, you know, put something yeah. else on the warning. They can. Um, well, it's yeah. still in addition to you, but yeah, that would make sense. Perfect. All right, and I'll get more information about the cannabis, but this one you can just read. All okay. right. And the last thing we had here was talking about the, um, uh, you know, maybe, well, we're talking about what, two meetings now, about the kind of the high, potential hybrid model of um, the board meetings. Um, you know, we had the in-person, which is hard to get seats in here if you don't come early. Um, Let me put up the extra ones. I know. A good thing. If not, Doug wouldn't have something to put his right arm on. So. <laughs> um, or, or, you know, or Zoom, which we, you know, we had the ability to see the Zoom process during the COVID meetings. Um, and then now that we're in person, there's you know potential of maybe something hybrid and you know an in person with some sort of ability to communicate with um, with with others um, that are not here. So so you can see the estimate in there. So I did the 65 inch. Or I asked them to do 65 inch, 75 inch plus the carts, and then I wrote up in the top. I hand wrote how much is in. Because I had the individual last time and I just got charged my credit card every month and it was only like 14 bucks. But I was the one who had to schedule everybody's meetings. So I'm gonna talk to again. <laughs> so this one would allow us a bigger platform and it's more options, but it's $20 a month. And then, okay. um, and I have a camera now, so I can, you can see me. Yay, all right, that's Thank great. You. So I have two comments along this line. One is um, more the anecdotal that uh, Wiley works away two days a week mm -hmm. and tried to sign into a meeting that I believe you were. Yeah, the right. place she got hit by lightning. Not, well, yeah, not so Wiley. she was able to find Not Wiley, but. she did not get hit by lightning. <laughs> yeah. but, her building. Uh, but she was commenting to me that it was extraordinarily difficult. And it ended up being, I think Nicole like, basically typed into the chat for the few people that were, and it was more than just her on, uh, you know, It was her and Kirk. Yeah, yeah. White. so. I think there's there's benefit to it that is even beyond just our meetings um, and you know her ability to participate, her ability to participate from a distance. Um, 
the other thing that I was going to say was I have not, we haven't had a BRI meeting yet, but we have one tomorrow night. And so we don't want to vote on it, and I can still pitch that to them. That, that might be a factor in the it's, financial end of things. Mm -hmm. um, just to put that out there that I, I haven't had a chance to ask. I mean, I, I still keep mulling over the, you know, I think it's a good idea, and I think there's a good opportunity for us to use the technology for not just our meetings, but for other committees or or for, you know, training purposes or maybe potentially share, share in the, um, the community. Um, but where I keep getting hung up right now, anyways, is just the, you know, the financial, um, responsibility that right now that we have, you know, we need to come up with, you know, $40,000 on the retirement and things of the budget, plus, plus, you know, plus some of the other things that we have adjusted since then, either, you know, rental of this building and other potential uh, uh, things that will come before the board on, you know, reprieving things and um, so we're already upside down money. I just, I, I think I would feel a lot more comfortable by building this into a budget. Uh, I know it wouldn't get the use immediately. It would be more of a next July thing. But uh, you know, I'm just kind of looking at you know we have to spend twenty four hundred dollars plus another twenty dollars a month. You know, which is you know between now and our next budget, you know we would be spending about four thousand dollars here to have the equipment in, do it. Um, and then we're already talking, we're already in the whole 40 30, plus. 31. Well, plus 31 plus the wave 2400, we're at the historical side. You know, so we're kind of, I, I think my other thing is I just would, I, I personally would feel um, irresponsible budgeting wise if I was to spend more money on top of knowing that, that we have kind of a hole right now with that. But I think the idea is a great idea. Did you think these this, prices this were crazy like on televisions? I thought. Did somebody have to run it? Um, we would have to have somebody that would. We can't have just to. turn it on and have the meeting and shut it off. For your no, well, somebody has to monitor it when it comes to like the chat and. That's what I'm saying. Question type thing, but but the owl thing. If we did the owl or whatever. The owl won't thing. work here. The owl won't work. Okay. Yeah, she said, he yeah. said no to So I was asking Paul about the prices of the TV. I wasn't sure if these were reasonable. And Paul, you know, saying he's not sure we need a 65 inch. He said if we went to 55, it knocks about 600 bucks off the price. And um, I, like I said, and I had said this from the get go, I, I was going to ask Vermont Digital for pricing. Where would you put the TV in here? Well, we would have to, cart, right? you'd have to get the car, you'd have to put it in. And then we'd have to install a lock on one of these doors. Well, where would you put it? During the meeting, where would it be? Well, the the seat. camera would plug into it, so she would be filming. So she'd plug into it. It'd be somewhere, but probably. It would have, there. yeah, either on this end, so somebody could see the audience and the select board, right? Or on this end. So either way, they'd have to. You'd want people, I assume, participating to see both. So it would have to be on either end. You'd have to wheel it out in that way. I mean, that'd be my guess. I've never done it, so. Yeah, I would imagine you could probably have it towards the back so you could still see. That's the yeah, right next the to the camera, sure. Yeah. Because she'd be the camera would plug into it and they would be you know panel. And, the, and we would also have to have the speakers. Big enough for me to see what's going on. Well, I think if that person were speaking, you'd do it on the, the speaker view, so then just that person would come up. And so you'd be just look and you know, probably fairly similarly sized to Jesse sitting across the room. And they said that we would we could try it with the TV without speakers, and then if we needed speakers, we could buy individual speakers or a little speaker bar or something if we felt that the TV didn't provide enough. So that's. I mean, it would probably be quite a bit of trial and error. Yeah, trial and error. <laughs> you know, who runs it? It might take a couple of meetings to really get it dialed in. Maybe we have to have another piece of equipment or something. Well, we'd have to have somebody else to run it. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Chris. I think uh, we should uh, give it serious thought in next year's budget uh, is, a, is, is something that we need to do in terms of communicating with the, with the public.
Ellie, what do you think? Um, you said you got your new account, so you're all fired up. There. Yeah, yeah. I, got my, no, uh, I got my new camera. <laughs> so I got a camera now. So I'm operating, but um, uh, I don't really care because yeah. I, like, I like in person. Yeah. Doug, I already know. <laughs> Doug? Well, I, I like the camera on the way the situation is that it is in now. The TV is not the sounds good. It. It's always nice to have a backup. Just in case, you know, because this is not, in my opinion, this is not okay. So it's, it's nice to have a back. And with the TV and not everything else, I, I'm, I'm put but, you know, for a back, just in case something mm -hmm. comes up. Because if something comes up, we'll all be at home on our individual computers. Like, yeah, I mean, on I mean, if it dies down, you yeah. go back to it again. You go back to your math or mm -hmm. everything else, and you still put it out to the people. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because the other thing about the television is that the state of Vermont isn't um, like VTRAN or <coughs> roads. They're not doing as many of the trainings in person. Now for trainings, we need to do them. They're doing a webinars like remotely. So part of the TV was having it here. So Tim, Richard, Alan, Gabe, Hazen, whatever, if they were attending trainings, because now they're going to do much more of them remotely. So instead of everybody trying to be gathered around this little computer screen, they could come here and plug a laptop into a TV and then they could all train and not be like, you know, staring over each other's shoulder because that's one of the things that's going to happen. Oh, okay. well, again, I, you know, unless I have that budgeted right now, not what they put the breakdown. I guess I would, I would appreciate hearing your perspective, knowing that it sort of has this multi-tiered purpose and also knowing our budget as well as you know it. Like, where do you stand with, with sort of what Chris was saying? With like, we're already in the hole. Yeah. Is this a reasonable purchase to make on top of knowing that? I, I wouldn't do it this year because we have a monitor, you know, not a big one, but we have a monitor at the town office that we don't use. It's not how many inches that is. I'm just going to give you this because I can But, um, 30 so, inches. so if you needed to, you could have a monitor. You know, so if the guys were doing trainings, we have, we bought a laptop during COVID. So if Alan and Hazen and, you know, the three of them could have two different laptops and a little monitor. So we could make it work for another year for training. And, and, um, and if we go, if heaven forbid, we all have to go home again and, and do our meetings remotely. The TV We'd all is be just going to sit here. Right? Yeah, it's not really about us all being remote. It's about <laughs> right. if there are people who aren't comfortable being Right, exactly. Um, so, it, but we could still do it. I mean, we did it with you, and you had a decent. I mean, it wasn't ideal, but it worked. You could hear people. But if I had a static monitor that was a little bigger, I could put that on a little table, like on the edge of the. We could make it work. I think a little better than we had with you. It was kind of like, okay, we're gonna try it with a laptop, and uh, yeah. and you were a good egg about it. But um, we could, I think we could run a cable. I know we could actually, because the Orca gentleman said we could from the TV. We could do a computer monitor because he said we could. So, you know, we could make something work better without spending any money. Well, except for buying the Zoom membership. What do you think, Jesse? Is it a special TV that you need or just something that? It's a smart TV. They right? said like a smart TV. Um, that was we were just. I think the yeah. whole thing has been what size to get because the halls. Yeah, has to have, have what the Bluetooth like, or Wi-Fi capability. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I have some not smart TVs that I need <laughs> to donate to the town. But yeah. They're still flat screen, but they're <laughs> not smart. But yeah, we have um, so we could use a monitor. I mean, because I do have. You know, one at the office that's not being utilized right now. So, since money is money is an issue right this year, especially um, not it's always an issue, but especially this year due to the retirement situation, um, I think we could. You know, twenty bucks a month is a heck of a lot cheaper than you know if you want to do the Zoom package. Twenty dollars a month we could cover, but um, TV just yeah it seems yeah, a little too much I, right now. Yeah, I think that we should. Put it in as a budget item, you know, next time around. That's the direction we go. Yeah, I, I don't even have a television at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie will be here in the office. Jesse's got one for you. you go, yeah. Yeah. Ellie wants to use the TV at the town <laughs> <laughs> town hall again. Yeah. Watch it. She's watching. So, <laughs> so we could um, yeah. you could add it to the 
that's what that's the consensus. We'll just mm -hmm. build it in that budget plan. Yeah. Do you want to still talk to BRI or no? Leave it for now. I'll take it. Doesn't hurt. Hurts to see what the. Um, Gives you some what, feedback. You know, yeah. what they're willing to do. Let's get towards the end of the year, tax write it off, you know, well, just donate it to the town. I think the, the benefits of BRI is already very fine. We don't think they need another tax write off. We're, we're not a nonprofit. It's, it's a good try. It's, it's not. Oh, you're not? not a nonprofit. Oh, I thought you were yeah. a 501c. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's, it's a talk to your accountant and see what you can do. We're not a town committee. We're not a nonprofit. We don't have to follow anyone's rules. Oh, wow. There's a free for all over there. No, but. Yeah, well, and I think the benefit for BRI is to be able to use it in March for Temple University. And so they may oh, yeah. feel more more pressed about feel it. Feel free to share the poll. Yeah, <laughs> so that's what I'm asking is like, do you want me to still bring it up as a potential yeah. for this year option or yeah. just. I, and what about the Zoom? Do you want me to order? Do you want us to sign up and pay the, the Zoom for now in case we have people? Or, or should I wait? And, I'll just wait and we'll yeah. see what happens. You, right? okay. um, I have a projector. Thanks, Jesse. We have two projectors. There's one, a bigger one, and there's one downstairs. We have two projectors here. Or one here and one that can Video come. projector for the computer? Yeah. We have a projector, yeah. And we have a screen right behind you. Right. We used it recently. So, so we would not, technically, we, and we've got a laptop, technically, we don't need uh, to buy a TV to do the hybrid. We could try the hybrid by uh, projecting. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, what's on your laptop. So your laptop becomes the, uh, the link. Yep. It gets its signal, audio or visual, from the camera. Okay. Uh, and it goes into your projector. Your projector puts it on the screen and if we've already got all of that, that's... We do, we have another laptop that we got, <coughs> excuse me, during COVID, and then, um, and there's a screen right behind you, I can see it, because right. we used it for, what was I doing? Yeah, oh, the, 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 the steering committee, the steering committee for the Better Connections grant, as far as I'm afraid. Right, I've, I've used it. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, I don't know that's, that's an option. That's a, an never. option to get through if we want to do that. Then we, have, okay. then we have experience with it in terms of uh, putting, you know, engaging with budget building and other yeah. Because I've never used the A project. I've never used it or any slide. So I didn't even yeah, know Yeah, you'll that. just have to, you'd have to get pretty creative on, um, you know, because obviously, like Dave was saying, somebody's got to run the computer, right? Yeah. So whoever runs That's the computer, would yeah. have to use the projectors usually within all the projectors I've used anyways. They're usually within six feet, thirty feet, feet. Okay. thirty feet. There's cables. I don't, these are older projectors, but anyway, it doesn't yeah. matter. We could do that, and then we could set the yeah. screen up, yeah. and then you know, we went on. I got enough cables, but I can run it from almost any place in the room. Yeah. Huh? So maybe one meeting we could test it out. Too much. But the, 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 maybe the, doesn't. The real catch is. Who monitors the chat, mm -hmm. especially during the open public comment? Public comment portion. Yeah. Yeah. Chris and I have always all in favor of Doug. Say hi. Yeah, I'll, the, I've monitored in the past, but you're right. I mean, that's kind of. I mean, you, you had asked that to be an inclusion committee to find a volunteer. To find a volunteer. Find somebody yeah, it would need somebody to run it, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, if, so if, if we've got the equipment, uh, and if we, if we could find That we could, that he could, you know, connect, we could connect, he could connect it to the laptop, and, and they would do the, and he actually emailed me the other day and asked me, and I told him I'd, have, I'd know more tomorrow, and they can run a cord from their camera into the laptop. Right. So, um, and maybe that, because this, because of her mics, maybe that helps our audio problem. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, not me. Not my I mean, we could somehow give it a test run. I mean, I, I think, you know, you know, probably having that Zoom membership is probably not going to bankrupt us up. You know, 
and maybe we can, I mean, we can always cancel it, right? So, yeah. we could do it and we could uh, <clears throat> try a test run. Try, not necessarily the next meeting, but maybe one day or something, see if we can set it up and see if it yeah, works. Yeah, because I can do a free account. Well, we would have to have work here, right? Well, yeah, yeah. because I would, because I was just thinking, but right. we could get from the laptop, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Maybe we yeah, can set up an ORCA it. so that one of the select board meetings coming, we could try. Maybe they could come like an hour early, like at five o'clock, and a couple of us could volunteer to see if we could hook it up and see what yeah. kind of quality we get. And then if it's good, we go live with it. And if not, then we'll have Lily call in. <laughs> and then, and if not, then we just you know we wait Who, until whoever it was that made the comment about uh, cooking dinner while listening to the select board meeting. That's like her daydream. <laughs> yeah. Able to do that. Yeah. I, I you know I'd be glad to help set that up. So. Okay. Or do the uh, make the connections? Yeah, because okay. we have to have the equipment, them. provide the equipment set up. All right. Yeah, so we can. We need Orca to be able to make that whole thing work. All right. So I'll I'll sign up for Zoom, but I can we could do a personal account. I could do a free personal account just at first. Yeah, that's probably. And um, and do that before we sign up for anything, okay. and then we could give it a test run. So maybe the first meeting in October. Perfect. Try it out. I'll write to um, Rob. Yeah, yeah maybe first they can come a little early. We can look it up and see if it works. Yeah, first meeting in October. Uh, and then, yeah, we could get Lily or someone. She'd call in. Yeah. And we'd have she could mock us from afar. <laughs> yeah, she's not even that far. Yeah. That's right here is the yellow. From at five. And we'll set up the. I'll get a tutorial from Kelly so we can set up the projector. And three. All right. All right. Anything further on that? No. Town manager's report. Anything that we have not gone over? Uh, so the town of Stockbridge provided us with a draft of their LHM. I wrote, I feel bad, I felt his pain. And I reviewed it, I think it looks good. Um, if anybody has any concerns, um, I told them I'd let them know tomorrow what it, um, that I thought it looked good. Obviously we're not editing, their document is really more content, I don't know if anybody had any issues. Yeah. Why, why, is, why are we looking at their... Just like they had to look at ours, you have to send it to all the towns you abut along with the uh, Regional Planning Commission and the uh, State of Vermont. Yeah. Okay. And we received no feedback from anyone, so I was trying to be courteous because I would have appreciated some feedback from someone, <laughs> but they didn't give us any. But that's mm -hmm. I, I just didn't Yeah, no, it's funny, isn't it? Yeah, no, we have to send it to all the abutting towns. And you, did you have it until I sent it to you? Because they no. dropped it on my lap. And no, because they have to send it to the chair of the slide. Yeah, board, I said, the chair, the yeah. Trees have seen this. I'll forward it No, on. I saw, I'll send a tree of my guy. You think I'm going to leave this one. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, you trees? Did, did you have any comments on it, Dave? The Stockbridge one? No. Say that again. I didn't know if you guys had any comments on that. I have so, a comment. Yeah. Uh, they included wildfires yep. as one of their uh, significant threats. Yeah. And uh, the, we did, um, at our last meeting, we had a, a public comment that raised the issue of wildfires. Yep. Yeah. And so I just, I, I just noticed that. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, as we look toward next year, we might want to consider whether or not there is such a threat here right. that we need to take more seriously. Yeah, no, that's true. That's has has Stockbridge had any type of? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I know not that, that you know, Killington has the. Yeah, no, I don't no, know. No. Not that I'm you know, aware of. The, the fire there this summer. Yeah. But, um, you know, with what's happening out west. No, <laughs> it's, 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 well, it's true. So. Mine had such drought this year. That they In the spring, yeah. Get out of that. Yeah. So we'll, um, I'm also having Nikon repair one of the expansion joints on Church Street. It's the one closest to the village on the, uh, the credit union side. I don't know when, but if you see flaggers there, that's why. Um, 
So once I have it, I've asked the state about ICS 402. So um, as I said, so I, I saw your email, Jean, but I was still, I'm still waiting for feedback from them about the training. Um, so I let you know the auditors are going to be here the week of the 20th. Um, East Bethel, Factory Hill Road is going to be swept and paved this month. Uh, White River Partnership is moving forward to remove the dam in East Bethel. They're also doing that. Um, yeah, he said they're going to start this week. Um, we're going to be holding a tax sale this year um, in December, it looks like. So I just got some information from Stitzel Page and Fletcher. At this point, I think I have like 11 properties in mind, but sometimes when they get the letter from the lawyer, they realize that we really mean business, so somebody pays. Um, so we'll yeah. see. I did talk to, I had my phone meeting on the 10th with the state of Vermont uh, to try to secure a hazard mitigation grant funding for a project on Gilead Road. Um, that's that big, um, it needs to be like a replacement of a, it's a big box culvert that needs to be replaced. And um, so I talked to Stephanie Smith. She just sent me the information. Um, so it would qualify, it'd be a two year project. Where is that located then? It's on Gilead around the Winterberry, Winterberry Lane area. And um, so it's, um, it would be a two year process anyways if we get the money because it would be something that we would need engineered. I have a hydraulic you know, study done. I have that the state of Vermont did, but we would still need someone to engineer it. So it would be a two year process. So um, she sent me the horrible looking <laughs> package to write the grant. So, oh, I'm like, yeah, it's a blood sample probably in there somewhere. So uh, anyway, so I am trying to get some funding for that. So uh, Du Bois and Kane gave me their contract. I'm going to review and sign that this week. Um, I put a note in here in your packet that I had um, sent an email to uh, Derek and Brian Wright uh, about a class four road issue up there that's not working out. So I've written to Carl Russell tonight asking the class four road committee to weigh in. Um, and give us some recommendation on the maintenance that needs to be done there to, to deal with the argument going on between the disagreement there. So I need some advice. So I wrote, Carl was aware of it. I wrote to him again tonight asking him perhaps they could walk it. I'm hoping as soon as the beginning of October, then they'll make, they'll hear from both parties. They'll walk the road, any other abutters, and then they'll make a recommendation. And then I would bring it to the select board to ask you to bless it. But we have a little teeth up there. So that's kind of the change of that. Also it included in your packet that you have um, Bethel's Cassidy named Teacher of the Year for the Hartford Area Career and Technology Center, Employee of the Year and Outstanding Teacher of the Year. So I thought that was great. So congratulations to Sean Cassidy. I thought that was nice. So I think that's it this week. I am prepping for the audit, uh, which takes a lot of time and working yeah. on that. Um, um, so just this one, one question yeah. The uh, NDEW uh, Energy Committee. Yeah, this was, I'm not sure I was supposed to give this to you guys, but yeah. Nicole had given it to me. Are you talking about this one? Yeah, about the select board resolution. Yeah, she hasn't drafted one. It looked like her notes of ideas that she had. Oh, okay. And, um, but one of them was that, and I did tell her that if she was interested in a select board resolution, then they would need to draft it. And, um, so this was just kind of some ideas I think that they were okay. talking about for Forward Fest, but it hasn't gotten flushed out yet. So, um, but that looks like, for me, obviously, the financials are in there. Um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Other than that. So the volunteer appreciation of that is canceled? Canceled, yep. I think that was probably a good call on her part. On um, uh, Cindy Metcalf was organizing a really nice event for volunteers for Bethel, but this was the new kids going back to school and, and you know, the Delta variant COVID, she just felt like, you know, maybe we need to wait a little bit. And then, um, she was kind of thinking about some other ideas and they were doing the brainstorming session um, last week. And I haven't heard the outcome of that yet. But, I mean, it's a great idea, but I, I also think she's right. We had the That's it. Minutes. select board meeting minutes from the 23rd. I'm going to steal Paul's thunder before he gets there. So 
on the select board meeting minutes, it should say the 23rd, not the 25th. Uh, so I'm just uh, Wait a second. jumping all over that one. Wait, Trees. I know. Well, hang on. I got to find this. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, how did I miss that? I want to see it. <laughs> it's what? Yeah, you did. What was yeah. it? What's wrong? It says 25th on the. Yeah. It's supposed to be twenty third. Oh, you know, I was probably typing them on the. 25th. You had it right on the. Yeah, I did. I must have been typing them on you the twenty fifth. Like Other than. That, <laughs> All right. So change Anybody date. Else have anything? <laughs> change that. date. All right. Thank you. Yes, I'm sure I was. Unless we have anything else, just need a motion to approve the meeting minutes from eight twenty three twenty one. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And then there was a bunch of other communications in there. There was um, uh, the RTS minutes. The RTS special on there. There was two rec committee minutes. Yeah, BCA has a. BCA was in there. Yep. And. Oh, has, has anything else come out of the um, solid waste in regards to our follow up? Meeting. No, we've mostly been just dealing with the special meeting stuff. Because I think we had talked about we would want to have that prior to us going to a warning in case we had to warn something, right? right. So you're thinking like, like if we wanted to pull out of the district or something, you know? Oh, well, you don't have to. You guys, are, you have, you have to make that decision in January, but that doesn't go in front of the voters. You guys make that decision. No, you just have to by January. Well, we would have to make that heads up. Yeah. Or else it automatically renews for another year, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, our line of credit is still kind of stalls. Hey, hey Royalton's fine. The, Royalton signed theirs. Um, despite, uh, I spoke to one of the Royalton members and they said they wanted to make sure their loan yeah. documents matched ours. And I said our, the lawyer hasn't approved it, but they signed it anyways. So I wrote to Bar Harbor the other day and said, if you don't make the edits that our lawyer has requested, then I am going to formally withdraw our application and we will go somewhere else because they are not wanting to make the edits. And I said, the select board in Bethel is not gonna go against legal advice and sign the document as is. And I have not heard back from Bar Harbor. So I did ask mm. them, so if they don't make the edits, then I will withdraw and I will go to Mascoma. And I know that the, I get the impression that the BRTS board, or the Royalton section is a little nervous about it, but I said, look, we've carried you for years. I'm trying to get this through. You signed against legal advice, even though you said you wanted the documents to match. So you're gonna have to wait. I, I, I got no option here for you. The select board will not sign something the lawyer's telling them not to sign. So the fact that they jumped the gun is strictly their issue. And I did tell them that as soon as we, no, we haven't even had to take a draw off our man. But I said, if we do, then, you know, obviously as soon as Bethel's approved, we'll deal with it. But they did sign? Yeah. They told us. It must be out of the meeting I want to do. Yeah, so, um, so just so you know, that's why you haven't seen it. But I, I don't go so quickly. So I'm hoping, I did find the say, but look, I need an answer. How is the, um, we do this or we're going somewhere. How is the subcommittees going? Slow. I mean, it's yeah. And not yeah. going nearly as fast as they anticipated. Yeah. yeah. I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. Nobody's even called me in regards to the one that they were gonna add me to. Oh, for the you were the Casella one. Yeah. 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 I think that's sort of been dropped as a. As a. As a mm -hmm. yeah. But the big one, the big one, right. as far as I'm concerned, yeah. is uh, job description from the person who is pushing the hardest is that committee, mm -hmm. and that committee hasn't moved either. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sort of everything. I sent you drafts, right, Dave? Didn't I give you the drafts that Bethel had? Oh, job descriptions? descriptions? Yeah. I haven't seen them, but you might have just sent them to me. I thought it was Dave. Somebody. I mean, David Barker is the one. Who Maybe I sent them to. Did you send them to David? I feel like somebody asked. No, not him. <coughs> No, I don't remember seeing it, but you may have seen it. I can look. I'll look and see if I have them. During this last <laughs> I will, I think maybe it was Jen. I'm not sure. BRTS job descriptions, question mark. Um, I think you did about, the, when we were talking about the facility management. Maybe that was it, I yeah. Think but, got it through yeah. All yeah, I'll look and see if I have any old ones. Because sometimes in the, you know, in the 
computer system in the storage, I might be able to find. I'll, I'll search the thing or have Kelly do it. And if she finds them, I'll send them to both, have her send them to both of you. Um, but yeah, so that's, so the law, the, so, so we haven't signed the line of credit. I, I, I got nothing. Chris, to sort of answer your question of like, should we be doing a meeting? I think if, if we really wanted a meeting to happen, just organizing it between the two select boards and not really trying to do it through the RTS would probably be the more seamless way, especially since it's mostly select board members from both towns anyway, but just, you know, like we've done before, just having a joint meeting of the two select boards. Well, I guess at this point, I mean, does our board- Do you have anything board, to talk about? Does our like board feel like, well, do we have any hub? I mean, I know when we met, what was it, March or April? That's when we met? Yeah. You know, at that time, there was still the indebtedness that was owed. Um, that was a hot topic. And then, you know, we had a couple of items that were in the local agreement that we were talking about potentially modifying. Uh, yeah. But I, I doesn't know, I mean, other than financially, we've been made whole. But, you know, I don't, I mean, do we want to just they let it ride for now? and? I don't think you have anything really coming up in my you have mind. a waste of time. I don't think you have anything to talk about. Yeah. Because you have that, if the yeah. committees haven't been able to do any of that stuff, and then. Yeah, right. Or it could be an opportunity to say we're. Right. I mean, I don't think there's anything pressing yeah. that needs to be addressed by both some boards. So okay. Maybe just hold off for now. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Anything else come before the board? More just on the Um then by Dr. Mills, the water the line across the southern bridge, it was, it's leaking a lot more now. What is it? The what? The water, water line crosses the bridge, comes across the bridge. It's under the trestle? Oh, yeah, it's under yeah. the trestle. It's always, it's always yeah. a, a drip. Yeah, it's always yeah. a lot, a lot yeah. more now. No, we're aware. Yeah, we oh. know. That's our boat washer that we're doing. <laughs> uh, if you didn't get the dam warnings, you're going to get the dam <laughs> yeah. warnings. <laughs> Kind of like rumble strips on the highway, you know, you get a little splash of water. <laughs> but it's low down. Don't we it? Yeah, so we know about that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, one other thing was the, uh, the clock. I spoke with someone that can do the job that had done the job in the past. And to fix this clock? Yeah, yeah. They can put it. He used to work for Bethel. Uh huh. And I spoke with him, and I, I know he made some errors, but I think we all have, and I was talking to him about it, and, and he said he can do that for us. Yeah, have him call. That's if you guys want to. Yeah, I, because that. the guy who was, who, the gentleman who has done it has been out of state, like he's south somewhere, and I don't know, I can't remember now when he was coming back, but we had Dave Aiken came in to try to help, and even he couldn't fix it. and. Um, well, so I, I can ask you to come up and take a look at it. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, not, right now, right now, um, yeah, thank you. So don't you call the office, whoever it is. And, um, but I'll ask Kelly because the guy, the gentleman, I, his name escapes me. You probably know he is, but from the clock shop, the guy who's been doing it for years. Well, I'll tell you who did that. Yeah, no, that's fine, though, but I appreciate that because. We, people have been paired, but the guy doesn't come back. We didn't have any options. We had Dave Aiken down here, God bless him, but he didn't, he couldn't fix it either. Yeah. Well, he couldn't go up. So he was on his cell phone talking to Alan and Richard, and, and they just couldn't get it to work. They feel like it needed some more work. So Dave and I were noticing, I didn't hear it ring at all during the meeting. It's yeah. been going. It's, I heard it once. Yeah. Right at the beginning of our meeting, but 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock, neither of the It's went. probably just heard, gone to sleep. Oh, yeah. It's all thrown so off. So anyway, so. 201. 201. Yeah. Crash it up there. I can ask her too, but um, yeah, if there's somebody who can, maybe you can fix it because we can't. Right. Not, no one on staff can fix it. And then this gentleman has been in Kentucky, Tennessee, somewhere for months on end. Right. He said something to me about it when he was head down, opening down here. Uh, it's so exciting. And we saw him about it and stuff. And I mentioned, mentioned him about him doing it, and he said he would, but he wasn't sure if he could be okay with you guys. Okay. Yeah. Well, just <clears throat> talk to me about it, and we'll sort yeah, it out. Because we can, can, can find some. Because okay. we can't, Doug. Okay. We're trying. I'm not good. I move we adjourn. Second. Second. Go. All in favor? 